everybody and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Donna. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I stream every other week. Um, I cook. I love Disney. I love music. I love singing. Um, I love a lot of things, but mostly I love cooking and sharing that with you. And that's what I do once every other week uh, at four o'clock on my channel. Um, so welcome in everyone. Today we are going to be doing a holiday open house, a Christmas open house. We're going to be preparing some great recipes for that. Um, I want to welcome in everyone who's in the chat and who's watching. Those of you who are watching the replay, thank you, Team Replay. You guys rock. Thank you to my moderators who have the blue wrenches. They answer any of your questions. You can tag any of them if you have a question or a comment or anything. Uh, they keep the chat flowing and family friendly and um, are just here to keep things going well. And so thank you guys for all you do. And to all my channel members, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of my channel and supporting me. It goes a long way. It helps with ingredients and equipment and all that kind of thing. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. We have a jam-packed show today. Um, this is going to be, unfortunately, the last stream for me uh, for the rest of this year um, because my next normal stream would be the day after Christmas. I want to take the holidays off to enjoy with my family. And as you guys know, most of you, um, I've been having issues with my foot. Um, so I'm going into my foot and ankle specialist tomorrow uh, to go over my MRI uh, that I had back in November. And hopefully we will get a game plan going and I'll keep you guys posted on what, um, you know, if I need surgery, I'm hoping that's not the case. But if I do, I'll let you know. Uh, that might set me back a little bit more. We'll see. So this is our last stream for a little bit. And fingers crossed, um, I'll be seeing you guys in the new year. I think my next stream is supposed to be um, after the 26th of December would be, I think it's like the 9th or something of um, January. So hopefully we'll be back then, um, barring any of my health issues with my foot giving me issues. But we should be good. Now, I have a list because I have so many things to go over with you guys. So as you guys know, too, um, we've been doing, uh, the whole community has been get, gathering together and banding together to do fundraisers. Um, Corey had a wonderful, hugely successful Christmas concert and Josh from Resort TV1 played and Neil from Melissa and Neil played the trumpet. Um, we had Big Fat Panda. We had Highest play the piano so beautifully and singing. Um, Nick sang um, Yeehaw Bomb. How can we forget Yeehaw Bomb? He was a legend. He was here um, in my house. It was amazing. Um, and, and the Jack Lee family and everyone who participated. If I missed anyone, I'm so sorry. Kyle, our drummer, he was incredible. Steve from Steve's World, behind the scenes stuff. We all worked so hard on that show. And it was amazing. And Corey, as of my last checking a little bit ago, is at $41,831, you guys. How amazing is that? I'm so proud of Corey. And everyone that participated and donated, thank you so much. I'm, I just can't thank you enough because it goes a long way. About over 90 cents of every dollar, I believe it's almost 98 cents of every dollar, goes back directly into Give Kids the World. So you're not paying corporate salaries or anything like that. This is actually going to help the children, which is why we support it the way we do. Um, also, let's see, what's next on my list? Oh, my fundraiser. So <laughs> my fundraiser is still up and going. I think Coins is too. Um, but mine, uh, from our last stream, the cookie... Christmas Cookie Baking Marathon with all my wonderful friends who participated. I can't thank you all enough. Um, we've raised over $12,500. Our official total, whoops, Richard dropped something. <laughs> Our official total is, I guess he's dropping the mic. <laughs> that was the mic drop. Uh, $12,504. I'm keeping my um, fundraiser open until around Christmas. Um, I'm hoping if we can bump it up just a little bit, maybe to 13,000, I like, like, I like even numbers and that 04 is kind of bugging me, but <laughs> I would love to try to do that. So if you guys haven't already, please consider donating to my fundraiser. 
um, and, and to give kids the world. Uh, the link is in the channel, um, the video description. I'm sorry, the video description. Uh, you can head on over there and I'll keep it open until like Christmas, the day after Christmas, something like that. Um, but then I'll close it out and we'll give you the official total in our Facebook group. So that'll be fun. Um, and oh, everyone who's watched our holiday tasting video, you guys, your comments are so awesome. I love the ones that caught Sam going up the stairs <laughs> behind us while we were making the video. That was so hilarious. And um, if you haven't checked that out, be sure to. It was a fun video. I'm also going to be um, making vlogs because we didn't get to all the cookies for the cookie baking marathon that I had hoped to make for all of you. Um, so there were a bunch left over, I think like five or something like that. But I asked you guys what you thought and you all said, yes, make vlogs of the cookies. So the dough, most of the doughs are pretty much made, had been made already and are in the freezer and everything. But I'm gonna take them out and I'll go over the recipe with you guys and show you how I prepare them. Um, so that will be coming up too. So you won't be like totally missing me. I'll have vlogs coming out and stuff like that. So that'll be fun. Um, what else did I miss? Oh, and late, oh, yes, dear. CH sent a member chat. She's been a member for 15 months. That's amazing, CH. Thank you so much for your Merry support. Merry Christmas, Donna. Your home looked beautiful for the benefit stream. Well, thank you so much, CH. It, it was such a fun, fun time. Um, it, it was it was quite an undertaking uh, transforming my living room um, into into a set, um, but we did it. And thank you. I'm so glad you thought it looked great. We worked hard on that. And um, Corey brought all his his lighting, and he did so many wonderful things. And I I chipped in the snowflakes, and and that was fun. And it was a great time for such a great cause. So thank you so much, CH, and thank you for being a member. That means so much to me. I really appreciate it. Um, oh, okay. So probably towards the end of the stream, we're going to go over some uh, mail because I did get a lot of Christmas cards. I want to show the Christmas cards because you guys took the time. And that means so much to me that you take the time to think of me and my family and to send us these beautiful heartfelt Christmas cards. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go through our mail. We got a package also to go through. So we'll go through that. Um, but before we, uh, get to all of that, um, last night I went to Disney Springs and met our dear friend from chat, Elena K808 and her husband, Wayne, they are here at Disney right now. Uh, we had a lovely dinner with, um, Steve's world and Samantha and I at, um, the Edison last night and we saw uh, got an extra treat of seeing my um, some of my band friends, Omar and Aaron and um, Ashley, uh, playing at the Edison, which was a treat. So we got to see that. But Elena was so so sweet and dear and um, brought me things from Hawaii. She brought me a, a jar of macadamia nuts, and she brought, brought me um, these really cute gummies. She said that has like a citrus powder on them. So we're going to have to try those. That might be a future tasting. We'll see. And all of these came from Hawaii. I can't believe it. And then she got me these um, macadamia nut shortbread assorted combo cookies, uh, which we cannot wait to dive into. So that'll be really fun. And Elena, if you're watching, thank you so much. And if you are watching, why are you watching? Because you're supposed to be enjoying your vacation. So <laughs> we love you, Elena. And it was so nice to meet you. And I cannot wait to see you again. We also got the pleasure last night um, by happenstance of meeting uh, the wonderful Tina McNeil uh, at Disney Springs as well. She was at Disney Springs doing the tree trail. And Steve uh, called me and he's like, are you on your way? Because Tina wants to meet you. And I'm like, yes, I'm on my way. And parking was a little bit tricky. I will say that there were like literally eight spots left. And I got one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so then um, we met Tina. She waited and hung in there because I, I took a long time parking. Um, it was it was not easy, but you know Christmas time at Disney. That's how it is. But yes, yeah, so it was a pleasure meeting Tina and Elena and her husband Wayne, and we had a lovely dinner and a lovely time with our our band friends. And so that was awesome. So we we got these. So I want to make sure I acknowledge Elena. And then I told you guys we have a lot to catch up on. Um, okay, so I told you about my foot. Oh, and the last thing is, and 
please never feel inclined, but I did make some really cool Christmas merch that I was supposed to have ready in my shop, my spreadshirt shop, like early November, but there was some sizing issues with the image I used to get. Guys, you know I'm not technical, and I'm figuring all this stuff out on my own, and I finally figured out how to resize my image. So there's really cute merch in the shop. If you can, can you pull it up on your phone or something? So we can show them the design. It's basically the logo um, I use on, uh, those of you who are my members, you should have gotten a Christmas card for me. And so the logo I used on the Christmas card, if you like that, you can get it on a whole host of things in the Spreadshirt shop. But totally not necessary, only if you really want to, and um, no pressure at all. So, okay, so I think that's all my notes. And... And cookie vlogs are coming. And I'm also going to throw some bonus vlogs in there. Oh, thank you, Richard. So here are our designs. Can they see? I can't see. And so that's the um, new Christmas one right there. Really cute with Christmas treats and stuff. Me with a Santa hat. <laughs> and there you go. Oh, there was one more thing. I knew I forgot something. Okay, guys. So my amazing friend Shannon from Thingma Bows. I got three new headband bows from her. Um, she has a wonderful Etsy shop. If any of my mods can throw her link in, because she's just amazing. Um, she she makes the most beautiful bows out of um, dresses that you'd find at the co-op and, and fancy Disney materials. And it's just really great. So this is one of them. And I thought it would go perfect with our show. Uh, today in our theme, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why I have something caught in my throat, but I do, but just bear with me guys. Um, but I'll show you the other headbands and some other surprises that she sent me when we do the mail. So, but this is a thingamabos uh, headband, which I love. They're so comfortable. They don't give you a headache and they're beautiful. So just uh, check her out. She's awesome. We love Shannon. Okay. Huh? We're going to cook first. Yes. We'll do the mail last. That way I get to sit down after I get tired. <laughs> okay, guys. So now <clears throat> we are starting with a eggnog bread. And it's not bread, really. It's more like a quick bread like a or loaf cake. I hate when people call it bread and you, you're thinking it's like a loaf of bread that you put like sandwich stuff on. Yeah. So it's a, it's a quick bread. I wish they would have called it a quick bread, but they didn't. Um, so for this, we're going to uh, use two large eggs, one cup of granulated sugar, a cup of eggnog of your choice, of course, um, a half a cup of unsalted butter melted. Oh, I better get my butter melting. So here's my butter. I'm going to melt it. And when we go over the ingredients. We have a $9.99 super chat from Nancy O. Oh. It says, thank you very much for the amazing streams you've done this year. We've enjoyed every single one. We hope you and your family have a wonderful and blessed Christmas and New Year. Thank you so much, Nancy. We appreciate you so much. You are always in the chat, and we just appreciate you watching. I'm so glad that you enjoy what we do. And um, Merry Christmas to you and your family, too. Thank you so, so much. You never have to feel like you have to do that and donate. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So we get to the melted butter. Now it says to use rum or rum extract. I'm using straight up vanilla um, in mine because I don't want that rum flavor in mine. But if you want it, go for it. And I don't know why this is like catapulting in here, but okay. Oh, that melted a lot faster than normal. Probably because I had it softening. Okay, sorry. So. Instead of the um, two teaspoons of rum extract and one teaspoon of vanilla extract, I'm just going to do straight out three. But you know me, I'm going to make it four because I, I always add extra vanilla. I just love that. And then um, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And then later, after the cake cools, we'll make the glaze. I'll go over that later, but there's eggnog in the glaze as well. So it's going to be eggnog forward, if you will. So if you don't like eggnog, I apologize. This is probably not the one for you. But if you like eggnog like I do and my family does, Richard does, we finally got one he likes, guys. <laughs> this should be really, really good. There's eggnog in the cake and in the uh, glaze, so it, it's really 
uh, pronounced. So you should get that good eggnog cake flavor that you like. Okay, so we preheated the oven to 350. I've got my loaf pan ready to go. I all sprayed with my best friend, Pam. And then we are going to do, 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 do in a large bowl using a whisk. We're going to beat our eggs. So I have two eggs here that I crack. I always crack them separate in a bowl. Um, I decided not to use egg beaters in this because, I mean, it's eggnog after all. And it's the holiday. So go, we're going to go with the whole eggs here. So we've got two here. And we're going to put them in our bowl. And we're going to whisk them up. And this might get loud, so if it does, I apologize. Oh, wait. Only eight more days until Noel's birthday. Noel, I'm so excited your birthday is coming. You must be excited, too. Happy, happy early birthday. Because I won't be live before your birthday, so happy, happy birthday. And I think I saw a show in here, but I'm going to, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was a shadow. What? Okay. Oh, no, that's not. There it is. Ah, see, I'm very particular. See, there was an egg shell in there that I missed. I'm glad I found it, but I'm going to wash my hands now. <laughs> Okay, after I stop, stop making noise, we'll do a chat check. <laughs> and thank you all for being here. Hey! Hi, big brother. How are you? Merry Christmas. Because shells are a great source of calcium. They are, but you don't want that crunch in your cake. <laughs> okay. So, Steve, I don't remember. I thought I think when we were kids, I remember you liking eggnog. Am I remembering correctly or am I not? Was I the one that liked the eggnog? I'm not sure. Okay. So we're beating these. Now we're going to add a cup of our sugar and the eggnog and then the melted butter and the vanilla. Okay. This is pretty simple. A quick bread. So we're just going to get our cup of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. Okay, one cup of sugar. She said, oh, yeah. Now I like it with some rum or bourbon, though. Yes, yes, I thought so. <laughs> Yum. Okay, so we're going to get this incorporated. And I, I'm going to, can they see on the prep cam? Okay. So you can see the color we got there. It looks really good. All right, so we've got the sugar, and how much eggnog do we need? A cup. So we need a cup of our eggnog. And Steve, you'll appreciate this. Uh, Southern Comfort Eggnog, the best eggnog, I think, that is around. Nice and creamy. Richard's like, don't use all of that in the recipe. We have to have some for Christmas. Okay, so we get our one cup. Okay. Looking good. Now our melted butter, which I caught before it made a mess in the microwave. And you can always melt your butter in a little saucepan on the stove if you have extra time. I always just do it in the microwave for our shows because, you know, it's, it's quick. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Look at the color in that. My goodness. Okay, and now the vanilla. We're going in with the vanilla. Uh, we're going heavy with the vanilla. Let's see. One, two, three, four. That was a big glop. <laughs> Remember, we were supposed to add five teaspoons of um, rum extract to this, though. So. Richard looks scared. You don't remember what Eha Bob says. We ain't scared. Okay. Now, 
And we're going to add the flour, which I already pre-measured so I didn't spill it all over my apron, which is two and a quarter cups of flour. Just dump that right in. Don't be afraid. And then we're going to use two teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder, not baking soda, guys. Baking powder. This you do want to measure. And you guys, did you ever see this in your um, can? You know what that's for, right? So you can level. You can level it off. There's the one. And see that? Two. Broken leveler. It's awesome. Okay. Now, and I think I missed the salt. Half a teaspoon of salt. Yep. Half a teaspoon of salt. And I forgot to bring my salt over. So here we go. We got our salt. No worries there. And then I say a half, right? So that's a half. Half. Half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to use a quarter of a teaspoon of our ground nutmeg. And make sure you can either use your fresh ground nutmeg, which is great. Um, if you're using ground like I am, make sure it is fresh. Um, I, I get a new one every season just because you want to make sure it's fresh. And uh, you don't want your spices going wonky in the, in the pantry if you don't use them often. Okay, so now that's, that's about it. We're just going to mix this up and make a batter. Richard looks scared, so I am going to take a little bit of the batter and make sure it's, it's not going to overpower him with vanilla. Michelle Williams wants to know if you ever made eggnog cookies. Hi, Michelle. Yes, actually on our um, Christmas cookie baking marathon, I made eggnog frosted cookies that had eggnog in the cookie and in uh, the frosting with um, pepper tree villa. Uh, so yeah, you can always go back and um, scroll to that. Um, fast forward, it was near towards the end, right? Yeah. Because I know it was, a, it was a long stream, over 10 hours. Okay, so I'm going to get my tasting spoon and just grab a little bit because now when Richard saw me put the vanilla in, he made me a little nervous. <laughs> you look scared. Okay, I was going for a walk. We'll be back. Okay. Mmm. That's yummy. Told you. That wasn't too much vanilla. It really tastes like eggnog. I can taste it. Yeah. So look at guys, we got like a, a thick cake batter. Because this is not a cake, it's it's actually like a quick bread. So it's gonna be a little bit thicker. So this is all ready. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of a mix. Uh, yeah, I, people either love it or hate it. It's not like an in-between thing. Sam, like, guzzles it. We were on Pepper Tree Villa's uh, Taste of New Year stream um, back last December, and um, Sam was chugging eggnog like there was nobody's business, non-alcoholic, of course, on, on their stream, and it was um, hilarious. That's what she's known for now. Okay. I'm just going to rinse this real fast. Rosalie Dana wants to know where you got your apron. Hi, Rosalie. I got this at um, the, it's, I either got it at World of Disney or the Emporium um, at Magic Kingdom. But I got it last year, so I don't think they have it anymore. Um, it was when the Baking Spirits Bright theme was out. Was that last year or was it the year before? Now I can't remember. I think it was last year. Because I didn't have a channel the year before, so I wouldn't have bought an apron. Okay. All right. So now all we have to do is put it into our prepared pan. 
which we will do. I'm going to move the sugar out of the way because we're done with that. I'm going to get a scraper, a silicone scraper, one of my favorite, favorite kitchen tools. I'm going to put this here so I can put this here and you guys can see this. This looks like a lot of cake, a lot of bread. Hey, Kim said, I never had eggnog. I don't like milk or eggs, and I don't drink alcohol. Yeah, I don't drink alcohol either. They make non-alcoholic eggnog, but if you don't like, you know, milk and that stuff, you would not like this. So hang in there for the next recipes. Tasha um, Rogers wants to know what, hi, Tasha. what a Christmas tradition you're still looking forward to doing. Um, Gee. I think we've done most of them already um, by putting up the tree, um, singing Christmas carols. I do that all the time. Um, I guess probably our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day um, dinners. On Christmas Eve, I always make an Italian meal. I make lasagna, garlic bread, and salad. Um, this year, I'm going back to my tradition of making stuffed mushrooms. Uh, neither... <laughs> Neither Sam or Richard likes mushrooms, um, but I really miss my stuffed mushrooms. So I really want to make them again. So I'm making them for myself this year, just a smaller batch. And then on Christmas Day, we always have um, beef tenderloin and um, potatoes and uh, vegetables of some sort. And um, I think this year I'm going to go with Brussels sprouts and carrots. Um, and then we're going to have um, dinner rolls with that as well. Okay, this Disney is... Up Boiler Up said, Hi, Brandy. Eggnog is great if you don't mind drinking snot. <laughs> oh, well, that's appetizing. <laughs> I don't think she likes it. I don't think so. Tasha said, stuffed mushrooms sounds awesome. They're so good. I use, um, make my stuffed mushrooms with um, Italian sausage and um, sh shredded Parmesan, fresh, uh, has to be fresh, freshly grated Parmesan and um, a little bit of breadcrumbs and Italian seasoning. It's so good. I don't know why Richard will need them. Okay. So. Jennifer Piccolo said we're, Hi, having, beef, we're having beef tenderloin as well. It's always a Christmas favorite. It's such a no-brainer, and everyone loves it. So it's it's really a crowd pleaser. Everyone loves it, unless you're vegetarian. Then that wouldn't be good. <laughs> okay, so I'm just tapping, like I always do, to get air bubbles out. We're putting it in at 350, 45 to 50 minutes. I'll put it in for 45, and we'll check it. And you guys know, you stick the toothpick in. It comes out clean. It's done. If not... We gotta put it in longer. So I'll put it in for 45 and see where we're at. Okay. Jake like Rubb says he has a really good Brussels Hi, sprout recipe. Really? Okay, so I make my Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. And then in a separate pan, I make um, a saute of um, sweet onion and bacon. And then after the Brussels sprouts air fry. I put them in the pan with the onion and bacon, and then I put a balsamic glaze on it. So good. So good. Got a $5 super chat from oh. Disney Up Boiler Up. Brandy. <laughs> she said, just now getting my Christmas cards out, so yours will be a little late. No worries, Brandy. Thank you for thinking of me. I really appreciate that. Do we want to do a um, chat check, and then we can move on to the next recipe, Richie? Okay. Noelle Ash is here. Noelle. Vicki Gillespie. Hi, Vicki. Jay Grubbs. Jeff. Resort TV One Dad. Jerry, woohoo! Welcome in. Michelle Williams. Michelle, hello. Happy's Haunt. Hi, Nicole. Scarlett Penford. Hi, Scarlett. Welcome in. Merry Christmas to all of you. Michelle Williams. Michelle, you said her twice. Oh. <laughs> Michael Disney Dad 98. Hi, Michael. Welcome in. Jan S. Disney. Hi, Jan. Pamela V. Hi, Pam. It's
it's so good that you're here. Hi to you and Jim. Sebastian the Crab. Jeanette, welcome in. Tammy Ellis. Hi, Tammy. Vicki Gillespie. Hi, Vicki. UK Disney, Keith and Mandy. Keith and Mandy. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Roxanne Simpson. Hi, Roxanne. Tasha Rogers. Tasha. Simba 2. Hi, Simba 2. Kathleen Stalford. Hi, Kathleen. Scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> Disney fan for life. Hi, Disney fan for life. And I think you said JL was in here earlier. So hi, JL, if you're still he around. Went for, he went for a walk. I, oh, that's right. He went for a walk. Well, when you come back, we'll say hi to you again. Sally Bertain. I'm sorry? Sally Bertain. Oh, hi, Sally. Welcome in. Julie C. Hi, Julie. Christine Hickman. Christine, I've so wanted to see you during your trip. I don't get to the parks much anymore because of my dumb foot. But hopefully, if I don't see you this time, I'll get you on your next trip for sure. Stephanie Danielle. Hi, Stephanie. Meredith, the Do Philly crew. Meredith, yay! Welcome in. Rosalie Dana. Rosalie, hello. Scarlett Penford. Hello again, Scarlett. Did I say that twice? <laughs> you Katie did. Mack. Who? Katie Mack. Katie, welcome in. Anthony the Molar Man. Anthony, welcome in. Okay. Jay Grubbs. You said Je Jeff, yep. Jeff again. We, we love all of you. Suzanne. Suzanne, yay. Jill Dold. Hi, Jill. Holly from Florida Fanatics. Hi, Holly. At first, I thought you said Hallie, and I'm like, Hallie, I don't know a Hallie. Disney World Castle. Hi, Disney World Castle. Welcome in. Amy Baranowski. Hello. Kathleen Stalford. Did I say hi? You did. Janine. Hi, Janine. Caught up? Uh, Cherry Connolly. Terry? Cherry. Cherry. Hi, Sherry. Reese Spark. Oh, Reese, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Tiki Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Roxanne Simpson. Hi, Roxanne. You're repeating. Triple A Sparkles. <laughs> Hi, Triple A Sparkles. Just repeat the ones I like. Okay. <laughs> Richard. Cindy Diasarido. Who? Sandy or Cindy? Cindy. 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 Thank you. Just so you guys know, I have 80% hearing loss in my left ear. So he's on my left and I'm not hearing him the best. So just bear with us. If I butcher your name, it's not intentionally. I Disney promise. World Freak. Carlos, welcome in. Stephen K. Hi, Stephen. Diane Hubernick. Hi, Diane. Uh, Mama Mickey. Hi, Mama Mickey. Are you caught up yet? Tana J. <laughs> Hi, Tana. Or is it Tanya? Tanya. T A W N. And yeah, it's Tanya. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Wendy B. Hi, Wendy. Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Tiki Shannon. We said Shannon, but hello again, Shannon. I think we're caught up. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. If That's Richard about. missed you, just tag him at our johns and he will be happy to let me know that you said hello so hello and welcome in everyone and thank you so much for being here mother i'm nature. so excited mother nature mm -hmm. well hello mother nature oh I listen can York. you cool it down here because it's really hot in florida i'm not used to wearing uh shorts and stuff in december <laughs> Alyssa and neil said we're on the road hi Alyssa and neil be safe please phantasmic chronicles Tony, welcome in. Did I say Jennifer Piccolo? Uh, I think before, but we, I don't think we officially said hi, Jen and Tony. <laughs> Piglet Roo loves Disney. Christine, yay, welcome C -H, in. I forgot CH. Oh, CH. How can we forget CH? We love CH. And Kathy H. Happy H. Kathy. Kathy H. Okay, see Kathy, happy. See? Oh, Margie name. Lenny, too. Margie, welcome in. Thank you all for being here. This is so awesome. Especially since this is my last stream of my of the year. So I love having all of my friends here to share this with me. And we're going to make awesome things. So we put our eggnog bread into the oven. Um, and 
I wish they would call it a quick bread. That's going to bother me. See, they call it eggnog bread. It should be eggnog quick bread, but they didn't do that. So <laughs> I'm picky like that. Now we're going to make <clears throat> our showstopper, which scares me just a touch because it's, it's big. Um, and this was requested by Miss Samantha. It is a pull apart Christmas tree. This is going to be huge if I do it right. <laughs> so I'm going to put all of this back because we're done with all of our sweet. That was our one sweet thing because we had all the cookies last time. So I was like, no, we'll do one sweet thing this time because we still have lots of leftover cookies. Um, okay. So for this recipe, we're going to need our rollout mat. So I'm going to move all this stuff over so I have my rollout mat. i got to grab some flour because we're going to be rolling out some pizza dough. Oh, yeah. So for this recipe, we need one pound of refrigerated pizza dough, or you can make your own. I got mine for a dollar at Walmart, so I just did that. We're going to need an egg wash, which is an egg whisked with one tablespoon of water, and I'm just going to use my egg beaters for that so that I don't have to whisk so much. Uh, seven mozzarella sticks, which you cut into chunks. A quarter cup of melted butter, which I'm going to melt in a second. A half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan. Uh, we're going to need our basil, uh, fresh basil, fresh parsley, and rosemary. Um, I couldn't get fresh parsley, so I'm going to have to use some parsley flakes for that. They didn't have any, apparently. And marinara sauce for serving. So, I mean, the hard part is going to be forming the tree. But once we do that, we should be good. All right. So I'm going to get some flour because we're going to need flour to roll out our dough. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to grab my herbs, and I'm going, I might want to chop those first and melt the butter. That's what I'm going to do first. Okay. All right. So it's time to grab the herbs. I'm going to grab the mozzarella and the pizza dough which are in the fridge, of course. Have the Parmesan and all of the herbs. I need basil. I need, nope, not chives yet. Okay. So we got our basil, rosemary, and we only need a tablespoon of each, so it's going to be a quick chop, not anything uh, fancy or anything like that. And then I'm just going to grab some um, oh, the egg beaters. We're going to need some egg beaters. I'm going to grab the um, chopped parsley out of the pantry. Right here. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to chop these really fast. I'm going to check our butter and see how we're melting. We're all melted, perfect. All right. So we only need a tablespoon of the basil and of the rosemary. So I'm just going to grab, can they see over here or not? Yeah, I'll just grab my cutting board and show them how we chop. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to use my little nifty handy dandy um, dinners with Donna cutting board that I got from my good friend Kaylee who designed my apron logo. And we need a tablespoon here. Teresa Scarwa says, hi Donna. I, well, love, I love this stream. Have, you have the most amazing recipes. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I do. Sp Richard can tell you, I spend a lot of time looking at recipes, watching cooking shows, saying, oh, that would be cool to make. And yeah. Zach's here. Hey, Zach. Welcome in. So here's a trick. When you're doing your uh, rosemary, you want to chop your herbs like right before you're going to use them, like within a half an hour or so, because 
Uh, most herbs will turn black um, if you chop them too soon because they oxidize. So you don't want that happening. But to um, de semi rosemary, you just go whoop, and go backwards, and it comes right off the stem. Disney World Castle says, Donna, you look adorable. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Disney Princess in Training is here. Oh, hi, Disney Princess in Training. Okay, so I'm going to get my good chef's knife. I can find it. Here it is. Rosalie wants to know if you know how to make Christmas divinity. I do. It's yummy. I should put that in next year's Christmas show. That'd be nice. Okay, so all you're going to do is your rock and chop. You're going to do a rough chop of your rosemary. I go across my board like this. Have fun with it. Don't let it fly off your board, though. Just scrape. Put it back. And this smells amazing. Contessa Luann C is here. Oh, hello, Contessa Luann. Welcome in. And see, the more you do it, the more chopped it is, which is really nice. And we got a $2 super chat from CH. Oh, CH. He said, our John, you look adorable, too. He does. You've got to show them your bah. Come show them your bah humbug. Hair looks great. How's that? Bah humbug. That sums up our house. Holly jolly bah humbug. <laughs> but he's a good sport. He puts up the inflatables and the trees when I ask him to. Oh, Rich is a good guy. We don't have 300. We have under 10. Maybe a half a dozen. If you guys want a quick video, uh, I could do a vlog too, like a short of all our Christmas decorations outside if, you, if that interests you guys. Maybe there's some Christmas music. Let me know if that is something you'd like or not. I like it really uh, finely chopped because, you know, rosemary has that kind of piney kind of thing and you don't want to get a whole chunk of that in your in your mouth when you're tasting. Just Neil, a Neil finally agrees with me. He said, bah humbug. Well, Neil. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Nancy O said yes on that. Yeah. Okay. We will do that. We will put that on the list of to-dos. She speaks for everyone. All right. Well, there you have it. Okay, so now I'm going to do this, and you lay your leaves basically when you're doing your basil on top of each other like this, and you roll it into kind of a cylinder as best as you can, okay? And then don't be afraid, because, you know, I, it's like technology. I would say don't let the technology own you, own the technology. So we just slice this way. Everyone is saying that's a great idea. Okay, great. Richie worked hard on it, so I think it should be showcased in some format. Okay. And we're doing the same thing. It doesn't the basil does not have to be as finely chopped as the rosemary, in my opinion. Because the basil is something, you know, you eat on a caprese or a margarita pizza, you have the whole big piece of basil, so you don't need a whole you know, it's you can eat a bigger dose of that than you can rosemary. Rosemary's a little bit more delicate. Okay, here we go. So our herbs have now been chopped, and I think they're going into the butter, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just going to make sure. Yep, it's good. So, so that these do not brown or blacken, I'm going to put them right into the uh, melted butter. And then once we form our tree, we will brush this all over. And putting it in the butter now will prevent the browning uh, or blackening of the spice of spices. No, of the herbs. Sorry, guys. Okay. 
So we're done with that. We're done with that. We need a little bit of the chopped parsley. It smells herby in here. Doesn't it smell good though? It smells herby in a good way. Okay, I'm just gonna get a fork to stir that around. What Disney Dan would say, herb, not herb. He and Martha Stewart, they're herby. Oh, that looks delicious. So this is going to be decorating our Christmas tree. It's going to be yummy. So I'm going to put this off to the side because we need to work with our dough right now. And I'm going to put the herbs away because we're done with them. So I'm going to put the butter there. Herbs are done. Hey, Make Max. WDW Max. Hi, Max. Welcome in. Merry Christmas. I'm going to put my herbs away. And then um, we will start rolling our dough. How's that sound? All right. Perfect. Okay. So we need to open the dough first. Well, first I'm going to put the flour down. And I should get the rolling pin because that's kind of how you do this. <laughs> All right. Max said, Merry Christmas, Donna. Oh, thank you, Max. You're so sweet. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit on our board. And this mat I've got, it's an OXO. And it was so worth uh, like 20 bucks I spent on it because it protects my cutting board. And then when I'm making flour and stuff, I can just roll it up and then it can go in the dishwasher even. You can cut on it and it won't, it, it takes a beating. I love it. Okay, so this is just one pound of uh, pizza dough that I got from Walmart. And we're going to put it on our floured surface. And, you know, we're going to put a little bit of flour on it so that it doesn't stick to us. Because we want the dough in our Christmas tree uh, pull apart, not on our fingers. So let's put it some here, put a little here. Pat, shake off the excess. Perfect. So I'm just going to dispose of this really quickly. I should have gotten a garbage bowl. I always forget my garbage bowl. I don't know why I have them when I don't use them, but I should use them. Okay. So this says, uh, -bum -bum -bum. cut the mozzarella sticks into one inch slices. So we've done that. I'll show you what I did. So here they are. Oops like that so seven mozzarella sticks you're going to have a couple extra pieces because this says to do 33 um, of the pizza dough ball things um, so you've got two extra pieces so I guess that's a snack right which is like yep it'll be a snack and then we've got to roll it into two pieces stretch and roll into a long rectangle well that's Jerry. good Jerry said hi. To oh, Jerry! Woo! -hoo. Okay, so I'm going to do the best I can to get it into a rectangle. It's easier to get it into a rectangle, I'll tell you though, than around for me. Disney fan for life said, "I'm going to try this low carb pizza recipe." Ooh, mine's not low carb, but do you have a low carb pizza recipe? That sounds yummy. Penn Smith said, hey, Donna. Hey, Ben. Welcome in. This is where it takes a little patience. You're just going to work with it. And, yeah. Try to get it. Tiki Man fan is here. Hey, Tiki Man fan. Welcome in. The other thing I like about using the store bought dough is it's made for like the home cook. So it's very like user friendly and it's um, more pliable. I, th I think they used probably a bread flour, like a glute high gluten and sorry, Alyssa, but <laughs> high gluten, uh, Alyssa's gluten free, um, high gluten flour in here so that it is easier to work with.
Let's see, I'm gonna need 33 rectangles. So we gotta really roll this out. This takes some patience. And we will be using our air fryer later on. So that'll be fun. Alyssa said, hi, gluten. No. I know. I'm so sorry. But we could do this friendly for you, Alyssa, using our gluten-free flour. Make our own dough. Alyssa and Neil are at um, Winter Garden Village. Oh, nice. They got Christmas happenings going on there, Alyssa and Neil. Edgar Mode is here. Hey, Edgar Mode, welcome in. Margie Lenny says, Merry Christmas to you and R. Johns and Sam. Margie, Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. We appreciate you so much. You're always here. You're so sweet. Edgar said, Malakalikimaka. Malakalikimaka. That's what Elena would say too. Malakalikimaka. Okay. So we're going to work with this. It takes time and patience, but you know, the end result is good. And it's a good upper, upper arm workout. Yeah. My rolling pin like just rolls. Woo. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. I've got to be able to make 33 squares or little things out of this. So I got to make sure I get enough dough. Doesn't say how long to make it. It'd be helpful if it said how big they should think you should make your rectangle, but they didn't say. So I'm and gonna guesstimate. Penn Smith said summer has arrived in Australia. Yes. And it's starting to look a lot like Christmas. That's amazing. Well, it's like summer here in Florida. <laughs> it's um it's been in the upper, mid to upper eighties every day, which is why I'm wearing my my sleeveless shirt today because it's hot. <laughs> And we're used to it being about 15 degrees cooler. Um, I'm hoping, but it's not looking like it's going to happen, that by Christmas um, it will cool down into the 70s. But it's not looking promising, unfortunately. JL said, I'm back from my walk and it's freezing where I am. Hi, JL. I'm sorry it's so cold there. I'll try to send some Florida sunshine your way. Oh, and that was one thing I did forget to um, say. Um, is that I know uh, Kentucky and all the um, states around there were hit really hard um, with the storms. I used to live in Tornado Alley, so I know firsthand how terrifying and horrible that can be. Even if you don't have a tornado hit, you can be without power for a long time, um, which is really hard. Um, so my heart goes out to all of you. Uh, thoughts and prayers are with all of you. Anyone who is affected by the storms or anyone who has family or friends, um, just uh, hearts for them in the chat. Just let them know we're thinking of them. UK Disney, Keith and Mandy said, your home always looks so festive for the holidays inside. Do you put lights out, outside lights and decorations up as well? We love to see them. We sure do, uh, Keith and Mandy. Um, in fact, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. We're probably going to make a short vlog um, with some Christmas music in the background of all our outdoor decorations because it's pretty cool. We actually got some permanent uh, Christmas lights installed, which was kind of a Christmas gift to me <laughs> and to Richard, too, because he likes to play around with them. Um, but they're, they're permanently installed, and you can they're LEDs, and they're in tracks. And so it's not, it's not like, you know, light strings. They're individual tracks, and you can't see them during the day. So that, you know, you don't, um, they're not an eyesore and you can leave them up there. They're up there permanently. So you can do it for all different holidays and program it to do all different things. And it's really cool. Don't you think so, Richie? Sure is. 
Jeff Matthews says, watching for Virginia, and it's currently 46 degrees. Oh, my goodness. That's cold. <laughs> I lived in Alaska. You would think I wouldn't think that's cold, but it's cold. It's 81 right now here. Oh, wow. That's actually cooler than it has been. That's good. Okay. It's going down. Here we go, guys. I'm getting the knife. <laughs> CH said, Donna, who, who installed them? Oh, okay, so we have a place here called Trim Light Orlando, um, but I think they're they're all over the country, um, and they do, it's called, what is it called? Is it tracked, tracked lighting, right? And it's it's outdoors, it's weather resistant, uh, they're guaranteed for life, so if a bulb goes out, you just call them, and they come, and they fix it. So that's really, really nice. Okay. So I'm going to cut this. It says into two rectangles. Disney fan for life said it's 39 degrees here in Niagara region of Ontario, Canada. Oh my goodness. That is cold. Okay. So now I'm going to try to do this as well as I can. We need 33. So I'm going to go... Nancy Rodriguez is watching from Boston. Oh, wow. Hello, Nancy. That's my old stomping grounds. I grew up in um, Rhode Island. I went to school, high school, in um, Attleboro, Massachusetts. Jody Pack says hello, Donna. Richard Hi, Pack Sam. family. Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, too. Okay, so I'm going to see how many I get here. You want to help me count, Richard? can't count. Math is hard. I'm going to, I'll count them once I cut them. Florida Fanatic said, we're watching quietly tonight while making dinner ourselves. Thank you, Donna, Aww. for everything lately. Oh, hi, Jackley family. Love you guys. My pleasure. Okay, so all we're going to do is take these. And I think I did something like this with Kellen, actually, um, Tommy and Stacy. Uh, we took, uh, what did we make? I can't remember. Do you remember what the stuffed little ball things? I don't remember. Oh, I can't remember what we made. If you guys remember, let me know. Isn't that terrible? You know when you know. It's, it's, it's up here. It's, it's just not. Yeah. Okay, so one, two, three, four times one, two, three, four. Yeah, we should have plenty. Uh, Disney fan for life said they're looking forward to warming up in Orlando, Florida, yes. in February. That would be awesome. Mr. Fault Moraz says, hello, Don. I'm on the Magic of the Mouse radio for a Christmas promo. Oh, that's wonderful. We love Magic of the Mouse radio. I have, um, actually, he runs some ads for me on there. And I do the weather for him periodically. I forgot what my numbers are. I have certain designated numbers, so. <laughs> but we love Bill and Magic the Mouse Radio. Peggy like Zanger is a 1999 Super Chat. Aw. Merry Christmas, Donna and Richard. Thank Aww. you. Aw. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Vicki Gillespie Merry says, Christmas. watching Donna cook makes me hungry. Okay, so I'm just going to make all of these and see what happens. I think I'm putting enough dough around them. CH will be in the parks the 18th through the 23rd. Ooh, really? Still in the 80s. <laughs> Ooh, hope we get to see you, CH, maybe. That would be wonderful. Okay. Sylvia G says, Hi, Don. Hi, Sylvia. Glad to be able to watch your stream today. I've been keeping my sister company at the hospital since September 9th. She's finally home, and oh. we're so excited. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's wonderful news. I'm glad she's home, too, and I hope she has a speedy recovery. And Merry, Merry Christmas to both of you and your families as well. So, yeah, we're just putting the little chunks of mozzarella in these squares, and we're rolling now if i have leftover dough which it seems i may i'll just um cut them into squares and and put them over the the remaining 
uh, you know, wherever they may need extra dough. Penn Smith said, watching you cook is a huge calming effect. Work is crazy oh. right now. I really need this. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Work is not going so great. I know how crazy things can get. So hopefully it calms down there for you. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this is a um, stress reliever for you. And Neil said, do we need Abbott's question mark? Are you kidding? We always need Abbott's. <laughs> Abbott's, if you guys don't know, is a local um, frozen custard uh, place here near my home. And they have the most delicious frozen custard. They have a candy cane marshmallow cookie crunch flurry just for the holidays. They have a hot cocoa flurry, which is incredible. And that's the equivalent of like a blizzard uh, from Dairy Queen or a McFlurry from, um, from McDonald's. Christine Hickman got Regal Eagle for dinner. Oh, Richard had that last night. Yes. Yeah. Alan Ferrero said, huge fan, Don. I love your whole Aww. Disney community down there. Outstanding Thank you. job with the fundraiser. Thank My you. kids watched it and got inspired to raise money, too. Your, oh, that your makes me so happy. Don't go unnoticed. That means so, so much to me. Thank you so much. And tell your kids, I said, wonderful job. That anytime. I see children taking initiative like that. It just touches my heart and makes my day, honestly, because, you know, we need we need more of that in the world. So thank you to them for sure. Rosalie wants to know if you're ready for Christmas. I'm getting there. I haven't wrapped anything yet. <laughs> but I've got all my Christmas cards out, finally. And, um, yeah, I, what else do I have to do? I think that's about it. I have to make some um, the rest of the Christmas cookies from the Christmas cookie show. I need to um, get like dinners uh, planned and figure out what I need from the store for them. But I'm pretty prepared, I think. I say that now. Jennifer Piccolo said you had me at marshmallow. I know. Marshmallow. Oh, my gosh. I love marshmallow. I love coconut. I love all that stuff. We got a $5 super chat from CH. Oh, CH. So question <laughs> so for the chat. Have you ever had sugar cream pie or is that just a Midwest thing? I think it's a Midwest thing, but I have had it, CH, and it's delicious. If you'd like, I can I can make it on a, on a show sometime. Let me know. Nick Werner says, Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas, Nick, to you and your family. Okay. Victoria Ward wants to know what you want for most for Christmas. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard when you get to be my age. I don't really like want things so much. It's just everyone that I care about to be happy. And I know it sounds so ridiculous, but I just want everyone to be happy and healthy and, and safe. <laughs> world peace would be amazing, but I'm not pushing my luck. <laughs> but yeah, I just I'm just happy with my loved ones being around and everyone, you know, just having what they want. Everything else is a bonus. Let's see. Everyone's saying please sugar cream pie. Ooh, okay. Okay, and then the last half of the dough. Kaylee Handmade Heart Ear said. Hi, Kaylee. Hey, Donna, just stopping in quickly before bed here. Early morning tomorrow, great to catch you live. Oh, thank you, Kaylee, I appreciate you. Thank you. I'll put a little bit over here. Got another $5 super chat from CA. CH. <laughs> At this age for Christmas, I just want friends and family, music, food, and movies. Aw, that's a good plan. I like that. Okay. We're getting there, guys. We are getting there. I'm Pen hoping. Smith said, yeah, I had my birthday on December 7th. My family oh, didn't buy birthday. me gifts. I really appreciated it. Aw. <laughs> I know how that is. Ricky Gillespie said, 
My grandma makes mince meat pie. Oh, yeah. My dad used to love mince meat pie. Mm-hmm. how we're doing here. Rob Fuzz is back. Hey, Rob. Welcome in. Deborah Doodle says hello. Hi, Deborah. Okay. Lori Jean Carlson is here. Hey, Lori Jean. Welcome in. I have enough of these. If I don't have enough, what I'll do is take some from the ones that are bigger than the others. Poppy Poppy is here. Well, hello. Welcome in. I love that name. That's fun. Okay. We're getting there, guys. This one seems to have a lot also. So I'm going to take, I'm just taking the extra dough from the ones that are larger because you kind of want them to be all the same size. JL wants to know if you use streaming services for movie DVDs and Blu rays more. Um, I use streaming. I use my um, YouTube TV and Apple TV um, mostly, JL. But yeah, that's pretty much what we do. We have um, Discovery Plus. And um, friendly as well. Love those. Okay. Alan Roberts says, C is for cookie, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Welcome in. Okay, we're getting there. Let's see. Let's cut this in half. There we go. This is the tedious part of this. It's not hard. It's just it takes time. And then we'll form our Christmas tree. You'll see how pretty that'll look. Rob Plus said, mmm, cookies. You got that right. We've got so many cookies. Actually, it's depleting. It, it's been going down because I put a whole bunch of them out at Corey's um, fundraiser. <laughs> and I made everybody take some home. <laughs> That was funny. Penn Smith said, we eat meat pies the way you guys eat hot dogs. Hand oh, I pie. love meat pies. Yes. Hand-sized pies at the game with the beer. Yep. I'm down with that. Michael okay. Disney Dad said, ah, oh, perfect timing. I saw Cookie Monster yesterday. So good <laughs> at SeaWorld. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to place our... Um, dough balls on the baking sheet in the shape of a Christmas tree. And then we're going to brush egg wash on the dough balls and bake them until golden brown at 450 degrees for 20, 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna just wash my hands real fast. Enchanting Nana is here. Oh, Enchanting Nana, hello. Oh my goodness. We have devoured like so many of your cookies. Enchanting Nana guys sent cookies over with Corey for our um, stream. And she had a, a pecan pie cake that was incredible. And we love the pistachio cookies. Oh my gosh, Enchanting Nana, I need your recipe. And we need to bake together. Just saying. She said, I tasted some of your cookies from the cookie stream. They were wonderful. Oh, thank you. I think you're wonderful. You make so many delicious things. I couldn't believe what you sent with Corey. It was inspiring. I just thank you so, so much. Okay, I'm gonna just rinse things really, really quickly. 
Okay, there we go. Now, I have our baking sheet with our, it said parchment. I'm using nonstick foil, not anything to be crazy about. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, this one has cheese hanging outside of it. I don't know why. Deborah Doodle wants to know, how long in advance do you make Christmas desserts and cookies and do you freeze? How, uh, how far in advance do I make cookie? Christmas desserts and cookies. Oh gosh, um, I, well, I, I, you, oh, it's hard to answer that because before I did my fundraising streams, I would start in November and I would freeze uh, the cookies. I would start probably the week before Thanksgiving and freeze a bunch of cookies. But now that I do my fundraising stream, I, um, I make the cookies on my fundraising stream. There's so many from there. We just use those and they can freeze very well. Most of them, um, for like six months to a year. Okay. So they had it like this and then they had one like that. And I don't know why they did that. I'm doing the tree the way the recipe did it. And four. And then five. See, every row will get bigger by one as a Christmas tree. Now we'll need six. Michael, and they should be touching. Michael wants to know if you have any walnut snowball cookies. Um. I do not. And we had snowball cookies from Corey's um, mother-in-law in Chanting Nana, but I think they're gone. <laughs> we, we ate them all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he said you can also make them with pecans. Yes, I've made them with both. Walnuts, too, actually. This kind of looks like a Christmas tree, no? Richard's not answering, so I guess maybe it doesn't look like a Christmas oh, it does. tree. I'm sorry, I'm texting. <laughs> and I don't know why some of my cheese is exposed. You want to make sure the cheese is not exposed um, as best as you can. So just re-roll if you have to. Oh, look at this. It's so cute. That wasn't hard. Look at that, Richard. Oh, that's cool. Look, guys. You want to take a picture of it? You want me to? Yes, I do. <laughs> that way if it messes up in the oven. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to make the egg wash real quick. Oh, in here. I told you there'd be two pieces left over. <laughs> Okay. So they have a very precise egg wash. I'm just going to eyeball it. Oh, and look at that. Our um, cake might be ready to come out, which is good. Okay, that and just a little bit of water. But because our cake is beeping, I'm going to test it with a toothpick. Oh, here's my pop. Ooh. Neil said, when you're making a million cookies, you have to have advanced preparation. Yeah. That is definitely not done yet. So we're going to put the timer on. It's, j it's jiggling. I know that's not the right texture, so we're going to hold off a little bit. We'll put a little bit of water in here. GGNYC said it looks so pretty. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so the egg wash just helps it to brown. So we're going to mix it all together and paint it with our egg wash. We're going to, it's just egg, I use egg beaters and water. Oops, I spilled a little bit. 
I spilled a little bit more. I should have gotten a bigger thing, but that's okay. We'll just do this. Just want to brush all over. I'm going to brush that clip so they're supposed to be touching. Jim from More Sunshine, please, is here. Jim, season's greetings. Welcome in. So good to see you. Hope you and the family are doing well. Rachel loves Disney. Is here. Hey, Rachel. Okay. And Smith said, my kids and I form a production line when we're baking cookies. Everyone has a job to do, prepare the dough and, all, and the baking. Yep. That's how it used to be um, when I was growing up. We all had our job to do, and mine was putting the chocolate chips in and uh, cracking the walnuts and the pecans and all that stuff and getting the nuts out of the shell because um, back in the day they didn't come shelled already. That's how old I am. Huh. Leanne Sherbick says, Darling Donna. Lee. Welcome in, Lee. My foot appointment is tomorrow. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. Gallery Man 629 says, Watching carefully, I'm making this for Christmas. Oh, wonderful. Yes, this is going to be a crowd pleaser for sure. Do I use this whole thing? That seems, let's see. Brush the egg wash. Yeah, I'm just going to go with this. You don't want an eggy. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. We're going to need that for the butter. I'm just going to do a quick rinse guide. too hard guys and you saw um it makes a really cute little tree i bet you could make a snowman out of that too if you wanted to so we're just waiting on the bread the eggnog bread to be done um let's see paul eichenlop says hello hi paul uh, it's so good to see you the scottish lad says hi donna food looks good oh hello welcome in thank you for being here Okay, so let's see. Should we go over the recipe one more time, maybe? Just so everyone knows what we did. So we started out, we're making a, a pull-apart Christmas tree. We started out with a pound of refrigerated pizza dough, or like I said, you can make your own or make it gluten-free if you want to. Um, an egg wash, which we just used, one egg whisk with a tablespoon of water. Seven mozzarella sticks that we cut into like, what were those, like, half inch, one inch slices, just in little chunks. And then a quarter cup of melted butter, uh, a quarter, half a cup of finely grated Parmesan, a tablespoon of thinly sliced basil, uh, a tablespoon of chopped parsley. We used uh, parsley flakes because I couldn't find parsley when I went to the store. A tablespoon of chopped rosemary and marinara for serving. So we, we're going to preheat our oven once this is finished baking the eggnog bread and we're going to uh, preheat it to 450 and we're, we already divided uh, our pizza dough into two pieces and we made like two inch squares with them. You need 33 of them uh, to get around the little chunks of mozzarella which we did and then we made little balls out of them and put them in the shape of a Christmas tree on the prepared baking sheet. You can use parchment. I use nonstick foil. And then that's it. So we just brush the egg wash on. That's the part we're at now. Step number three. We're brushing the egg wash on the dough balls. And we got to bake them until golden brown 15 to 20 minutes. So I guess what we can do now while we're waiting is add the Parmesan to our melted butter mixture. Candy Mom says, I've been here making spaghetti for these people who say they need food. Cynthia, welcome in, and that's hilarious. I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball it. We're not baking. I mean, we're cooking with this, so I'm just going to eyeball it. 
Okay. And so I'll just mix this in with our melted butter and herbs. Diane Hertz says Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Diane. Welcome in. Priscilla Short is here. Oh, hello, Priscilla. I'm sorry, I didn't hear for a second. My ear turned tuned out. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to go over the dough balls once it bakes, this mixture of the butter and the Parmesan and the herbs. It's just going to put it all over the top. So I'm going to give the eggnog bread a check. That's looking better now. I think that when it uh, beeps, it should be good to go. A hitchhiking bone says... Hi, Dawn. Cream-filled herb bread in the shape of a Christmas tree. What's not to like? I know, right? Oh, it's going to be amazing. Candy Mom says, I like to make monkey bread. Mine has cream cheese in the middle. Oh, that sounds delicious. I love monkey bread. So good. Okay. So hang tight, guys. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, is there anything that you guys want to see me make sometime that I haven't made, I can make notes of that. And also, I, I'd like to know what your favorite thing to make for a holiday party would be. I got my vocal cords. <laughs> Disney Springs must be packed. Nick just said that grapefruit's open for everyone. Oh, they never opened the grapefruit lot. So for those of you who don't know, there are um, two main parking lots at Disney Springs. Lime, which is on the World of Disney side, and then the Orange, which is on the um, movie theater and Cir Cirque du Soleil side. And when those fill up, and it's rare that it fills up, but all this week it's been filling up, they've had to open the grapefruit garage, which is primarily for cast member parking only. They will only let you in there, usually if you have a cast member ID and all this other you know, um, identification, because you can't park there unless you're a cast member. But very rarely, they open it up to the public for overflow parking, and they've done that today. So that's, I'm glad I'm not there now. <laughs> I guess that was a good thing I got there last night. All right. Candy, <laughs> Candy Mom said, where did all the cookies go? My mailman must have ate my stash. I know, right? <laughs> Sorry, Cynthia. <laughs> Penn Smith said, my mom's, smoke, my mom's smoked oyster dip with rice is amazing. Ooh, that I bet Corey would like that. Yum. Have you ever made cheese balls before? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, I make cheese balls and um, the cream cheese kind, but I also make um, something kind of like this. Um, but it's called, well, you guys have seen me make it, the Brazilian cheese bread. It's so good. It's even better than the one you get at Epcot and a lot cheaper, too. <laughs> Tasha said, I like to make artichoke dip for parties, and I bring it in a mini crock pot. That is yummy. That's one of my favorite things, too with a little crostini or something. Oh my goodness, so good. Okay, so we got 37 seconds left. DVC Sharon is here. Oh, hi Sharon, welcome in. So good to see you. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you and Andy. I hope we get to see you in January. I think you're coming back in January if I'm not mistaken. That would be wonderful. We had such a fun time with you. Sam loved hanging out with you at the park. <laughs> and hopefully my foot will be better so I can hang out in the park too I miss doing that with my friends okay all right we just beeped guys so now is the moment of truth thanks Richard he's feeding our fish Ricky he's overdue for dinner okay This looks much better now. I will stick a toothpick in and see how it goes. It still looks a little jiggly, but we'll see.
Okay. Nope, that came out perfectly clean. We are good to go. So I'm going to jack up the oven to 450. Tiki Man fan said, I bet Steve would not like the oyster dip, but Corey mm -hmm. would make him eat it. Mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely correct. <laughs> and I would pay to see that. <laughs> Aaron Wright is here. Oh, hi, Aaron. Welcome in. Richard, can you do me a favor and grab that cookie sheet with the, yeah. And I'm going to put this on it. If you can put it here, or here, yeah, here is good. Or maybe here. Move Mickey back. Because it needs to cool before we un, un, you know, unmold it or whatever you want to call it. Okay. We're waiting for it to come up to temperature. I'm going to pop it in the oven, even though it's not at 450. Well, I'll wait for it to get a little bit higher. But we'll see how it's going. Next, we're going to be making our um, veggie crescent bites, which should be yummy. And I'm sure, raise your hand or put a thumbs up or something in the chat if you've had veggie crescent bites before. It's pretty classic. The first time I had them was at my bridal shower in 1995. <laughs> and that's dating me too. And um, yeah, we I like them so much. They became a, a tradition. We make them all the time. Um, I haven't made them recently. I think because Sam doesn't eat much veggies. Do you like these? I haven't. See, so you're so picky too. The, the crescent veggie squares. I don't know yet. <laughs> he doesn't know yet. We'll see. But for the veggie crescent squares, and you guys know me, I had to use my air fryer today and I had to use my crescent rolls because that's how I roll. <laughs> I love my crescent rolls. I, they, they're so versatile. Um, so we, we're going to start with a can. Oh, my... Siri's talking to me. I don't know why. Um, but we're just going to start with um, a can of crescent rolls. I'm going to use a sheet because it's easier. Uh, we're going to use uh, some cream cheese. Cover your ears for this one. Cover your ears. Thank you. Uh, a little bit of sour cream, which Richard's not a fan of. Uh, some fresh dill, some chives, salt and pepper, and two cups of assorted veggies. I've got cucumbers, some broccoli, some cauliflower. Um, some shredded carrots that I shredded in the food processor and some cherry tomatoes that we're going to use to garnish our um, crescent bites. And you can cut them into, we always call it pizza because we always, we always cut it into larger slices as an appetizer. You can cut them into little, you know, two inch squares and serve them as a little appetizer, which is nice too. Okay, we're already at 403 degrees. So I'm going to pop this in. Surf foam is here. Hey, John, welcome in. And we'll see where we get with it. And Sharon said she hopes to meet up with you in January. Oh, that would be awesome. Okay. Mickey Travels is here. Hey, welcome to Mickey Travels. Oh, Mickey Travels. I opened your Christmas present today. Thank you so much. We love our mugs. They're beautiful and we love them. Thank you so much. And our little sign. Thank you. Thank you so much for thinking of us. You're so sweet. And Smith said, let her know if you want the recipe. Like, yeah, I want I want the recipe for sure. Absolutely. Okay, so this firmed up just a touch. Corey meets world is here. Corey, is that a Christmas tree? <laughs> it is. It is a pull apart Christmas tree stuffed with cheese. I wish you were here to taste it. Are you still on uh, your trip? Are you home? I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna put it in for a little bit, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, um, I think this is not in here right, Richard. Yeah, this is not in here right. Let's see. Can you fix it? The turntable's not working in the microwave, guys. Or is it, is it right now? I always have an issue with it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to put this in the microwave until the cheese balls are coming out of the oven because I want it warm so we can spread it easier on the top. Corey's um, sitting in an airport. 
are you sitting in an airport? Well, I hope I'm distracting you from waiting because <laughs> I know waiting in the airport can be a drag. So glad you're here, Corey. And I hope you guys had a wonderful trip. Your food looked amazing. I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, where'd they go? <laughs> Which is last Sally, thing. Sally wants to know if you ever made cheese straws. I have made cheese straws. They are so yummy. They're a classic. I should make those sometime on the stream. That would be fun. They're easy too. Um, okay, so after the um, the Christmas tree comes out of the oven, not a real Christmas tree, the cheese one. <laughs> Don't ever put a real Christmas tree in the oven. That wouldn't go well. Um, <laughs> you're good. We're going to take our butter and Parmesan and herbs, and we're going to put it all over the, um, the pizza balls. And then we're going to serve them with uh, the marinara sauce. So that's easy, easy enough, right? Okay, so for the, um, oh here, the veggie crescent bite. Okay, so we have uh, some dill that we're gonna chop, some chives that we're gonna chop. Um, and we're gonna make, I'm gonna mix the, um, the, well it's not really sauce, but the cream cheese layer first. And then I'll, I'll do the crust and get that all going for you all. Okay, I'm gonna need that brush again. So put that there. We're just chopping more herbs. I'm gonna chop some dill and I gotta chop some chives. So grab those. Corey, if you're still here and listening, did you have any other good food that I haven't seen yet? Steve and I had um, dinner at the Edison last night with um, Elena and her husband, Wayne, and we, we all got the Edison burger, and it was so good. It was so good. And we got the um, clothesline bacon, which is expensive, insanely expensive, but still really good. And, uh, and we saw Omar and um, John's wife, Erin, uh, they were performing, and Ashley in Sound Society at the Edison, it was really, really good. Michelle wants to know if you ever made potato candy. Oh, yes. I made potato candy on our St. Patrick's Day stream um, earlier this year, and it was really yummy. There were not, there were leftovers the day of the show, but there were no leftovers within a day or two. They were all gone. Oh, this smells so good. Smell that. I wish there was smell of vision Dill is so yummy. Space Mountain Dave Cottrell says hello. Hi, Dave. Welcome in. And thank you for what you did for Give Kids the World, too. Space, uh, Space Mountain Dave Cantrell had a, a Give Kids the World live stream, which was awesome. Hitchhiking Bone says your tree looks so pretty in the background. Oh, thank you so much. Richard likes that one too. That's a high tech tree. It's called a twinkly and it, um, we can program it to do all kinds of things, crazy things. Here's my knife. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing with the dill. Just give it a rough chop. And dill kind of looks like green hair. We got 10 minutes on our Christmas tree. Josh from Resort TV One is here. Josh, welcome in. He said, hey there, looks amazing as always. So much fun on Tuesday at your house. Oh, thanks, Josh. We loved having you. You bet I, you were amazing on your sets. And yeah, Josh was live earlier today, I believe, from Animal Kingdom. I'm sorry I missed it. Some days are hard Sunday mornings for me because I do online um, church. And I do like three different services. So by the time I'm done, it's like one o'clock. <laughs> but yeah, it was an incredible, incredible event on Tuesday. Corey did such a wonderful job. And Josh did, and Yeehaw Bob, everyone, everyone who participated was incredible. It was just a team effort. And I love when we all come together like that as a community 
to do some good. Um, it just, it warms my heart and um, just makes me very happy. Okay, I need a bowl. Be right back. Okay, so I've got my cream cheese here. Gosh, they're playing with Liam, but wanted to say- Liam! Oh, I don't know if you can hear me, but hi, Mr. Liam. I miss you. I hope you're having a good day. Alan Roberts wants to know if you could make calzones. Oh, calzones. My gosh. Yeah, I've made calzones before. I've made calzones. I've made stromboli, which is rolled up um, like in a spiral. And then I've made, um, I make really good um, deep dish pizza. Got two, two little stray things of cream cheese. So I'm mixing together. There we go. And I'll need the, your favorite sour cream. Aren't you excited, Richie? I don't mind cooking with sour cream. I just don't like it eating it on stuff. Okay. Uh, you're not going to taste it. It's going to mix with the cream cheese. And basically, what the sour cream is doing, as well as adding just a, some flavor, it's also um, thinning out the cream cheese so you can spread it easier. So. Okay. Yes, yeah, spoon. Okay. All right. And I apologize if this banging is going through my mic like a jackhammer. And he wants to know if they can use dried herbs. Or will it make big, a big difference? In this particular recipe, I, I highly recommend the um, fresh herbs. When you're going to put something in the oven, then I think it's okay to use the dried. But because this, we're putting all of this fresh on the top of the um, pizza once it comes out of the oven, um, I would say use fresh in this recipe for sure. Anything that is not cooked... Anything going in the oven or the air fryer or slow cooker, you can definitely swap out um, dry. But just know that you need to use, I think it's less dried than, no, you need more fresh than dried. Sorry. You need less, you use less because it's concentrated of the dried uh, spices or herbs. Jessica Pulaski wants to know, is there something you've made that you would never make again? Yes, blue milk. So much easier to buy it. Very expensive, but making it at home was even more expensive and was horrible and gray, no matter how much blue I put in there. I use gel food coloring. I use liquid food coloring. And no matter what blue I put in, it just turned gray and it was awful. I would never eat that again. Producer Preston is here. Preston! I miss you, P. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. And I'm so sorry for the noise, guys, but you got to get this really mixed well. Okay, now that's done. And now I think we just dump the herbs in there. <laughs> he said, miss you too, Aunt Donna. Oh, P, you're the best. Okay, so I'm gonna put the um, herbs in here and then we're gonna put this bowl in the fridge to chill and keep this cold while the crust is baking. Don't crash. All right. I was making like a stack of dishes in the sink, so I was like, don't crash. <laughs> oh, that's pretty yummy. Yeah. 
I need like a scraper thingy. Disney Up Boiler Up says you can always try the blue milk again with the Wilton food coloring. Yeah, I should do that. But I'll be honest, I really don't think it's. <laughs> there was like no hope for that. And it was so expensive because I had to use. What did we use? Mango and dragon fruit. I paid $6 just for the dumb dragon fruit. It was ridiculous. Mmm. Try that. Yummy. Okay, I'm going to put this in the fridge to set up. And now, all we need to do, this is so easy. I love it. We take our dough sheet, and we're going to roll it out and stretch it out into our prepared baking sheet. Of course, no stick foil, because that's how I roll it. And says, I mix cream cheese with a small tin of tuna with some chives and then spread it on a small pita bread and fold it in half. Ooh, that sounds yummy. We used to make like tuna melts in pita bread. Um, my mom would make like her tuna salad recipe and then put, we would melt, um, I think it was white American cheese on it. Or you could use provolone or whatever, Swiss. And then she put it in the toaster oven and make tuna melts like that. So good. Now I want a tuna melt. <laughs> I wish Kiki's was open. <laughs> Toasted it. They don't have a tuna melt. Oh. I know. Never mind. Okay. Michelle Williams says there's a shortage of cream for cream cheese right now. Oh boy. I'm glad I got mine when I did then. So I'm just gonna press and stretch and press and stretch. Get it? It's not going to fit the pan. There's no way. So you just make it as much of a rectangle shape as you can and press it until. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm going to step over here and do some work here. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cut them into little squares, so let's do the best you can. It doesn't help that I'm doing it on a non-stick foil because I'm trying to save cleanup time because most people would just do it in the pan because it shouldn't stick anyway, but I'm type A that way. <laughs> okay, perfect. And our um, pizza balls are going to be done right now. Hopefully, I'm going to check them. Oh, look at that, Richard. <laughs> we have success, people. We have success. Okay, I'm going to put that on for 15 seconds. I'm going to grab this out of the oven. Look at that, guys. And they're just, some, a couple of them are just starting to ooze. So this is perfect timing. And we're going to take this, the mixture of the melted butter and the um, cheese and the herbs. And I just put it back in the microwave for like 15 seconds, but we're just going to Spread it all over. Look at this beautiful thing we made. Whoops. That was beautiful till I spilled the cheese thing. There we go. Julie said there's a shortage of cookies at her house. Oh, well, I must fix that. <laughs> I 
Okay. Look at that. And there we have it, guys. This beautiful pull-apart Christmas tree. Richard, if you wouldn't mind taking another picture of the finished tree. Now, I'm going to lower the oven. Temperature to 350, and I'm going to leave the door open a little bit. But here, I can turn. You got it? And I need you to open this because I can't do it. Maybe I can. I think my hands were a little greasy from the butter. There we go. Carol Hank said, great job on the tree. Oh, thanks, Mom. Okay, so we're going to put a little sauce in here. And, of course, I'm going to warm it up. We're not going to be barbarians. Well, you could be. I mean it. I'm not judging. <laughs> okay, we'll just put this in for like 10 seconds. Doesn't do that much. Andy Lynn said, yum, Donna. Okay. So, guys, this is so easy. So, now we're just going to put our pizza crust in, the crescent crust, and bake it for like about 10 minutes. There we go. I'm going to do a little quick cleanup here, and then we can try the cheese wreath, which is good because we didn't have lunch today. Okay. This looks so good. Our next recipe, for those of you who are following along, is going to be our um, another, I think it's another crescent recipe. Yeah, our cranberry brie bite. And um, we're making it with my homemade cranberry sauce that I made. So good. Richard, we must try this. Um, yes. Snow White is here. Oh, hi, Snow White. Long time no see. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome in. Okay. I think this should be okay here. I'm going to put this here. I'll bring over the warm marinara. Is Sam here? No, she's not here. I was going to say, she wanted this, so. You ready to come try? I'm really wanting to try it. <laughs> Should we go for the ones at the bottom so I don't work the whole tree? Sure. You sound like Liam. These ones. Oh, well, I thought you were going to. They're hot. They're full Look at that. I'm very hot. Yeah, be careful. Don't burn your mouth. Mmm. Mmm. They're lava hot. Mine's not lava hot. Mine's okay. Because it says I'm double dipping. Usually I would never double dip. Mmm. Very yummy. <laughs> and those are a winner. I bet you could even... Winner, winner, chicken dinners. <laughs> I bet you could even put a little bit of pepperoni in there if you really wanted to. That would be yummy. Oh, my goodness. These are really good. Samantha, if you are watching from your room, um, come down and have some of this. It's really good. I'm going to try one more. Look at that, guys. So good. Alan Roberts said, I hope you don't have a carousel of progress moment while using your oven. Me either. That would be disastrous. We need to get a voice operated up. <laughs> mm. These are so good.
that's not going to waste, that's for sure. Okay, where should we put this in the meantime? Okay, look at yeah. Close to me. <laughs> well, it's going here. It should be okay here, right? Yeah. It's really pretty. I would be so proud to serve that at a party. Okay, guys, so now is our moment of truth. We're going to un... Uh, on earth no <laughs> we're going to uh flip out our let's see our eggnog bread of course it doesn't want to come out hmm i said do it for 10 minutes i'm going to go around the edge with the um spatula Carol said, Samantha, go try, go and try the tree so I can see you and wave to me. Yes. Grandma has spoken. Okay, so I'm just going to loosen this a little bit. If not, what you can do is just glaze it in the pan if this ever happens to you. I'm going to just... Oh, see? I just had to loosen it a little bit. So now, we just need to let the eggnog bread cool a little bit, and then we will put the um, frost, the glaze, not the frosting, the glaze, which is really simple. It's just powdered sugar, eggnog, and nutmeg. Three ingredients. Can't go wrong with that. Okay. So while we're waiting on the veggie pizza, I think I will start on the um cranberry crescent bites cranberry brie crescent bites yes um, thank you cranberry brie crescent bites so we've got a mini muffin pan 24 um vessels in there uh that we're going to use so i'm going to put that up here and we need a tube of crescent dough i'm um, again using the sheet it's easier to cut into squares that way then cooking spray for the pan, which we already did. Uh, flour for our surface, which I have. Um, an eight ounce wheel of brie cut into chunks, which I already have. I did that ahead of time. Um, my cranberry sauce, half a cup of whole uh, cranberry sauce. And that's what we're using today. Um, my cranberry sauce is so simple. You just take a 12 ounce bag of fresh cranberries, make sure you rinse them and make sure there's no little stems uh, sticking out. So make sure you go through them all and there's no bad ones. And then you put, I make mine with a cup of orange juice, one cup of sugar and the, you stir that and then you add the uh, bag of cranberries, bring it to a boil. Be careful because it will foam with the orange juice and you don't want it, it'll make a mess of your stove. So you gotta keep an eye on it. Don't let it overboil. Then when it comes to a boil, you lower the heat a little bit and you, you cook it for about 10 minutes or so. And the natural pectin in the cranberries, they'll burst, not like burst all over the place, but they'll just like expand. And that causes the cranberry sauce to naturally gel. Uh, so you don't have to add anything. It's just those three ingredients that I use. And I put a little bit of orange zest in there as well. And it is delicious. You like my cranberry sauce, don't you? Yes. Neil said he's home. I thought he was bringing Abbott's. Yeah, where's the Abbott's? No, <laughs> just kidding. Okay. And this recipe also calls for chopped pecans. I'm not putting them in our cranberry brie bites, but you could definitely do that with yours. You can put whatever kind of nut you'd like in there, I think. Okay, let's see. So we need to flour our surface because we are going to roll this out into 24 and cut 24 squares. And our pizza crust has three minutes, but it needs to cool before we put that cream cheese layer on there. So we're all good. And what I might have to have you do, Richard, is um, pull it out for me if my hands are all floury. Mm. 
Let's we'll see what we got here. Two minutes. That I mean business. Okay. Neil said, we had a loaded car. We went to BJ's first. Oh, well, that makes sense. So now, see, this has a little bit of a hole in it. You just pinch the seams together and press, and it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so I'm going to put my flower over here. And when that comes out, Richard, if, if it beeps before I'm done here, which it probably will, you can just um, use my pot holder and put it right on the stove. Okay. And thank you. I was in the chat for Richard. He does such a nice job with everything. Not really. I forgot to switch the camera. Did you? <laughs> Richard. Okay, so we need to cut and get 12. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on here so that the rolling pin does not stick to it. I'm also going to throw this away because it's in my way. How's our chat doing, Richard? Is everyone doing good? Yes. Okay. So basically, guys, what we're doing, and this is why I chose the dough sheet. It is a little bit easier to work with because you don't have to press all the seams together if you can find it. If not, just get a regular can of crescent roll dough and pinch all those seams together. I just think that's a time waster. And if I see the dough sheet, that's why I always keep some on hand. Okay. Rosalie that's your said, cue. Donna, you're so smart with all these recipes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, hello, Anora. Welcome in. Okay, so I'm going to cut this into two. And then I need to get each one into 12. So I'm going to do this. And then let's see. This. And this. And Nora's cooking dinner while watching. Oh, awesome. You forgot to turn the timer off. Okay, so if I do, that's three, six, nine, twelve. And I'm going to push this back together because I didn't like the way I caught it. See, and that's the thing, if you make a mistake, like I didn't divide it the way I wanted to. So you just pinch it all together and pat it out. Make sure your hands are clean always, just saying. And then I'll do this, this, and this. Yeah, I should have divided it into thirds instead of fourths because I'm going fourths this way. Okay, so now each of these is going to go into our prepared pan. Did that look right? Oh, you know what? I think that needs to go back in the oven for a couple of minutes. So this is just going to go into these. Um, let's see. How am I going to do this? I think I'll do it sideways. It'll be easier. You can't see me, but I'll be working here to put this into the little muffins cup like that Alan fired me I'll see you later <laughs> I'm just gonna put this here and there now I have a little bit more working space but let me just see how this goes 24 squares. Place the squares into the muffin tin slots. That's what we're doing now. Snow White loves your apron. Oh, thank you, Snow White. That's very kind of you. Trying to be festive. I must be watching because she's modding. Ah. Okay. 
This is going to be good. Extra go. Yeah. Did you put the timer on? No. About five minutes. It should be good. And see, so we're just putting them in the muffin tin. Almost like those, I don't know if you guys remember when I made stuff with the wontons. It's kind of like that. Except we don't pre-bake, I don't believe. Nope, we're going to put everything in here. Kathleen loves the music you're playing. Oh, that's awesome. I love the music. Julie Young said, pick up Trader Joe's margarita pizza. Which a Disney food blog said tastes like Viennapolis. Really? It doesn't. Oh. <laughs> Bad advice. Whoops. Cindy said, I made these last year and they were a hit. Oh, really? Yeah, I love these. They're so easy. So we just put our stuff into the muffin tins like so. Maybe you have a little extra and you see one that needs a little help. You could just kind of. Help it along. I'm going to grab my brie and my cranberry sauce. Okay. So here we go. If I can unscrew the thing. See my hands from the butter <laughs> and the dough. <laughs> Richie really had to work at that one. It wasn't just me. You made it slippery. <laughs> I didn't need to. Okay. So I'm just going to put our brie in each one. Jennifer said it doesn't get any better than brie with homemade cranberries. Oh, so yummy. Now, of course, you could put the pecans in if you'd like to. Um, I just decided not to because I know Sam will eat them probably without, but not with pecans. Sai says, hi, Donna. Hi, Sai. Okay, we're going to have leftover brie, and that's fine. Oh, that looks good. Perfect. We have a little bit of brie left over, but no big deal. Because you don't want cheese oozing everywhere. No one likes a runny brie. <laughs> I'm going to wash the hands because they're kind of slippery. And then we're going to top it with... Oh, I put my herbs marshmallow. in. No, we're not putting marshmallows in there. Rosemary. Because each one's going to get a little bit of rosemary and I need a spoon okay guys this is so simple and I just think it's great to use the homemade cranberry sauce look at this so good this our dream says hello hi Jeff and Ange welcome in This is so pretty and just so perfect for, um, you know, the holidays. You can make these for Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. It's a great appetizer anytime, really. Oh, cranberry. It smells so good with the orange. And it's a great way to use any leftover cranberry sauce if you have any at Thanksgiving time. Put a little more. 
Jennifer wants to know if you could also make those with phyllo dough. I bet you could. You could also use wontons or anything like that. Any any kind of vessel like that would be great. JL wants to know if you've watched Lion King yet on Disney Plus. I have not on Disney Plus, JL, but I, I have everywhere else. <laughs> Just haven't gotten to it. There's so many good shows on Disney Plus. We've been really enjoying um, Hawkeye. We like the MCU. Glenn Marchant says, John, oh, just, re Glenn. just returned from my Christmas week at Walt Disney World, relaxing, watching Master Chef Donna, oh. Busboy Richie, and Nicholas playing Christmas music. Love it. You are awesome, Glenn. Thank you so much. Welcome in and Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Rosalie wants to know what your family is eating for Christmas. We are having on Christmas Eve, my tradition is to have a lasagna, which I make from, um, not from scratch, because I don't use, uh, I don't home make the noodles, but everything else I use is is pretty much from scratch. And then um, we have garlic bread that I make with ciabatta rolls, and um, which is really good. I make it in the air fryer. And then we use, um, we have salad. And then we're going to have a peppermint a candy cane with a chocolate crust uh, pie that I'm going to make. And then on Christmas Day, we're having um, beef tenderloin and we're having um, potatoes of some sort. I haven't decided exactly what kind they want yet. Probably mashed because that's what they like. And then um, we're going to have um, carrots and Brussels sprouts and um, uh, rolls. And I'm going to make an instant pot uh, cheesecake for dessert. So, yeah, we feast on Christmas. <laughs> Jeff said, Donna has inspired me. I'm making a bowl of cereal as we speak. I just, <laughs> I just need milk, correct? <laughs> yeah, that should do it. But the question is, you know, whole, low-fat, low skim, almond, what kind of milk? That could be a dilemma. Oat milk. These are so pretty, even before you put them in the oven. I love the, the rosemary is just, it smells like the holidays. You get that kind of, I want to say piney, but it's not really, I'm not eating a pine tree, although it is from a, kind of for us tree. And Nora said, what is Donna adding now? Okay, so we are adding just a little sprig to each one of rosemary uh, to taste. Just a little bit to make it pretty. And you could add the nuts if you wanted to at this point as well. And there you have it. That's as simple as it gets. And uh, now we're just going to put it into the oven. 375 for, I believe, 15 minutes. Let me just double check on that. Yep, about 15 minutes. So I'm going to make the oven go to 375. Okay. Melissa from Mouse Talk is here. Hi, Melissa. Welcome in. So happy you're here. Okay. So the rosemary, now we're done with the rosemary. All right. I'm going to wash my hands. And... Then we'll put these in the oven for approximately 15 minutes. So here we go. Okay. 
So now, Richard, this is where it gets a little tricky because our next recipe, guys, we're doing is our honey goat cheese air fryer, well, air fryer honey goat cheese balls. That's going to be yummy. Okay. Get that out of there. And put our cranberry sauce back in the fridge. It's down here. Okay. Now, this one we had to make ahead of time because they have to freeze twice. So, and this is our last recipe. We just have to finish the, I dropped my recipe. We have to finish the veggie pizza and the um, frosting of the eggnog bread. Thank you, Richard. Okay, so. For this recipe, we used eight ounces of soft goat cheese. Oh, and I'm going to need the goat cheese balls. They're in a container in the freezer out in the garage. Two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I used more like a quarter cup because that's how much it just took to dredge everything. Uh, one large egg beaten, and I used egg beaters. A half a cup of panko breadcrumbs, and then we're going to use a quarter cup of honey. Um, basically, you take the goat cheese ball, uh, it's soft, of course, and you form them into about 24 balls of your 8-ounce goat cheese, and then you freeze them for about, I froze mine for about an hour, and then what you do is you take them out of the freezer, then you make a dredging station, like you're going to fry, but you're not frying it. You dredge them in the flour, then the egg, and then the panko. And you just do it until all of your goat cheese uh, balls are coated. And then you put them back in the freezer overnight, which is what I just did. And now we're going to air fry them. And then you top them with honey. So I'm going to show you what they look like. And there was condensation forming on the inside of my lid. So I put an extra layer of foil so they would, you know, not get compromised. And here's what they look like all ready to go. And so our air fryer says to cook at 390 for six to eight minutes. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn our hit air crisp and it's already set to 390. And we're gonna do it for six minutes because we don't want them exploding. Now we just have to wait for the um, air fryer to come up to um, temperature. But um, yeah, so we just dredge, um, make them into little balls like that the goat cheese, and I use my food safe gloves. I just found it easier to roll like that, and then it can get all over my hands or the kitchen. And you know, you're touching these things, you don't want it everywhere. So I use my food safe gloves to do it. And then, um, so I got about 24 of these, and then uh, dredge them in flour, egg, panko, flour, egg, panko. And that's all you do. And then we cook them for six to eight minutes at 390 in our air fryer that we preheat, preheat, which we're doing now. And then you drizzle it immediately with a generous amount of honey. And then you have an appetizer. Now, how easy is that? And goat cheese is like an elegant appetizer. These are gonna be pretty. And the other thing we can do, and they suggest- I'm not sure I understand. Oh, really, Siri? Understand, understand. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to help the browning process, and this is optional, you can spritz it with olive oil, or um, I'm using a non of a, I can't believe it's not butter spray, and that should help with the browning. So it's gonna spray them all with that, and it should help. CH is heading out to a progressive dinner party. Oh, nice. Well, have a wonderful time, and thank you so much for being here, CH. Thank you for your super chats. Thank you for your support, and I probably will, well, I might see you uh, in online church, but if I don't, um, Merry Christmas to you and your family, and have a happy, healthy, safe new year, and um, I will see you very soon. So thank you for sticking with us. We appreciate you. Neil said, whenever Donna says Rosemary, I sing a Simon and Garfunkel song. I know, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I love that song. Okay, and I see what you did. Did you guys see what he did? <laughs> How do you know I did that? He turned me upside down because Sam wouldn't do that. She wouldn't take the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah, we're on our last recipe, guys. This is great. Now I'm gonna check and see if our crust is cool enough yet. Yeah, yeah, it's cool enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it over here. Stacy Rogers is here. Stacy, welcome in. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So Stacy, we've made our eggnog bread, but we're letting it cool before we make the glaze for it and put the glaze on. We've made our um, pull apart Christmas tree. I'll bring it back over so you can see. We ate some of it. We ate the bottom, but isn't it pretty? There's cheese in there. So yeah, that was yummy. And then we made, um, we're making veggie crescent squares and we're making cranberry brie uh, little bites and we're making air fryer uh, goat cheese honey balls. So, so we're gonna put these in now. That was fast. No? I'm all in. I think they'll all fit. You don't want to crowd. That's the thing. It needs air to circulate. I think we're going to be good with one batch. That's where the benefit of the big air fryer comes in. I can make my whole party right here. Okay, we're ready to go in. Now throw this away. All right, and now while that's all going, I dropped my dish towel, so I'll go pick that up. No need to be throwing that around the kitchen. It's my good Disney Christmas one. All right, we're gonna top our pizza or our crescent veggie squares or whatever you wanna call it, really. So here's our cream cheese, sour cream, dill, and um, chive mixture. Did we put chives in there? Yeah, we put the chives in there. Okay. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky because I have a lot of things going on here. I think I'm done with the flour, so I'll get that out of here and the rolling pin. Thanks, Richard. I'm not sure where the lid went, but we'll find it. It's under all this. No. Hmm. Well, it's around. We'll find it. Okay. So all we're going to do, guys, is treat this like, you know, like a sauce or a frosting and put it all over our... crust and spread it evenly. And I'm sorry for the noise. Okay. That's as much as I think as I can get out of here. I don't know where the lid to that went. That's so bizarre. Okay. And I'm using an offset spatula. I find it easier to spread that way. Nora, do you want me to say that now? Let me know. I'll be happy to do it. I just don't want to ruin anything. Let me know and I'll do it. <clears throat> Sally C. Oh, Sally C. said, oh, I see the, on the fridge a fellow QVC sister. Oh, you know it. <laughs> and Cricket Box is here. Hello, Cricket. Good day. Has Hanora answered? No. 
anytime is fine. Oh, okay, wonderful. So, can you put it here so I can see it and look at the camera so I don't screw? <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. I have an, an announcement to make. Um, so, Grace and Lucia and Nick, guess what? Guess what, you guys? You are going to Disney World in February. That's right. You are going to Disney World in February, Grace, Lucia, and Nick. Merry Christmas from Gigi and g -Paw. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope I did it right. I don't know if I did it. I'm so, 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 so sorry. But if I did, yay. Okay, and wash hands again. I hope they heard it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so now we have the basis of our crescent roll. She said that is awesome. You're you're fantastic. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. So I have already chopped some um, cauliflower and some broccoli and we're just going to sprinkle it all over so we were trying to find a way to surprise them in christmas oh and you picked me to do it oh my goodness gracious that's such an honor thank you so much honora i hope you guys have the best trip ever and you never know. Hopefully by February my foot will be better. Maybe I'll see you. That would be even better. Okay. That looks good, huh? What do you think, Richie? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go for the cucumber. I'm just keeping an eye on my timers, guys. I'm not ignoring you guys, I promise. Have the prep panel, so all I can see is. Oh. Honora said, Yes, you are my Disney sister. Oh, thank you. Love it. Classy Disney Mom says, Hi, Donna. Well, hello, Classy Disney Mom. Welcome in. Merry Christmas. I like cucumber if you haven't figured it out. I always put the most cucumber. <laughs> okay. Oh, our goat cheese balls. Let's check them. Oh, they look like they need a little bit more. So I'm going to air crisp. Page one. Okay. When that timer goes off, I got to check the goat cheese balls. Okay, so cucumbers are done. This is done. Put all of this aside. And now for the tomatoes, which I already have. <laughs> I like to put those on there. Very festive and colorful, you know. And you can do this however you want to. Let the kids help. That's always fun. And, you know, of course, make sure they wash their hands first. Because if they're anything like I was as a kid, I used to make mud pies. And I don't want people putting muddy hands on my pizza. Trying to get it. That looks about even, don't you think, Richard? Mm -hmm. Maybe one more. Right about here. I like color. <laughs> Are you eating the cheese ball thing again? Yeah. <laughs> I see you chewing. <laughs> okay, so I have some shredded carrots. I'm just going to use that like this. 
kind of like the cheese, if you will, with the pizza. And the Virginia grinds. Anthony wants to know if you have any tips on great lasagna. She's making it for Christmas. Hi, Virginia. Actually, I do. Um, if you go back to, I think it was January of this year, I did a whole Lasagna 101 uh, stream with Jillian from Living in Giz, and it was amazing. And, yes, my, my advice is make it the day before, um, and, and don't bake it. Uh, just make, prepare it the day before and bake it the next day. It comes out so much better. And um, I use 93% lean uh, ooh, beef in mine. And that's another tip I have. And I'm going to turn this off. Okay. Oh, now they're done. Okay. So we got a lot of things going on right now. I'm going to grab a plate. <laughs> Mary Kehoe is here. Mary, welcome in, Mary. She said, Merry Christmas. You're such a marvelous soul. Oh, Mary, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to grab these. And make Carol them... said it looks so good, Donna. Thank you. Love Pugs is here. Hi, Love Pugs. Loves Pugs, sorry. Okay, these are going to be so yummy. And some of them are just starting to explode, but I didn't like the color I was getting. So see, I like the brown, golden brown. These are nice and light. Okay, so I'm going in with these and I'm going to put the honey on them, Richard. And then if you could help me by taking pictures, but I'm not done with the goat cheese balls yet. I got to take up the cranberry bites. <laughs> they need to rest. Okay. Let's see. Now we just pour honey on these, and we can use a fork or a toothpick to try them, Richard. And you can use your favorite honey. I know I said on Christmas Day I will look to have that. It timed out perfect. Oh, wonderful. I love it. You ready to try? We need your camera and we need you. <laughs> I'll put those on a plate before they look a little messy when they come out of the oven because the cranberries exploded, but that's okay. Let's go with these and then we'll cut that up. Yes. Mm. They might be for you. Mm. I like them. More honey, please. Mm. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> she likes my shirt. <laughs> they're very warm. But they're very good. And this is what happens when you have lunch before you stream. Because now I'm hungry and I'm eating them. <laughs> Mm. They are hot though. Okay, so there you got got it, guys. Those are the honey air fryer. I mean, aren't they beautiful? Be proud to serve that. You can put as much honey on it as you want to, or you could use a dipping sauce of your choice. So 
Stacy Rogers says hi. Hey, Stacy. I thought we said hi, Stacy. Welcome, well again, Stacy. <laughs> okay. We are officially done with this one. And I'm gonna cut this into squares. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. Go like this. Okay. I'm just cutting these up so we can try a bite. You want to come try a bite, Richard? You want the one with or without broccoli? Okay. I only cut that first row so far. So here we go. I wanted everything on mine. Mmm. Good. Make a little salt. You think salt needs salt? I think it's delicious. Very good. Mm hmm. You can add salt if you want to, Richard. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> okay. So while we're waiting for the um, cranberry brie bites to cool down just a little bit so we can try those, I'm going to finish cutting the rest of this pizza up. Maybe put some on a plate or something. Or in a mock and mock for later. Stacy posted a link for your lasagna stream. Oh, thank you so much, Stacy. You rock. Appreciate you. I need a big square. Oh, you're going to have to move that for a second. <laughs> Let's see if you get in the cupboard. Let's see. Well, let see what we can fit in here. I might need to go bigger. I'm going to eat this piece with the tomato. Mmm, -hmm. yummy. Okay. The Jossa family said, so Donna, we've been ninja watching. Just Jossa family. Hi. Yay. Thanks for everything we did. you do. We love it. Oh, we love you too, Jossa family. Welcome in and thank you for watching. I hope you had fun so far. Okay. That's going to be it probably for that one. Sally said you could drizzle ranch or you could. crumbles over that. You sure could. Let's see. I need a big, oh, you know what I need, Richie? Uh, probably that one up there, that big blue one that's round. These are so good. Mm. Mm. Sorry, guys. Mm. My TV, I got cream cheese on my face. <laughs> That's not embarrassing. Kathy H said, love my ninja. Donna got me started. Oh, that's awesome. I love mine too. Okay. I'm just going to cut this up. And this will not go to waste either. This would be a good lunch. Corner Sports is here. Tommy and Claudia, welcome in. Hey. Oh, it's so nice to see you guys. I'm just going to put this big piece in like that. 
So guys, I want to know, have you guys tried this veggie pizza or veggie squares, crescent squares before? They're so yummy. Fit what I can in here. That's probably going to do it. Here, we'll cut these and put them on a, maybe a paper plate or something for later. I'll get it. Okay. Oh, see, you did like it. I really liked it. Alrighty. Julie said, don't they get soggy in storage containers? <laughs> what was that again? She said, don't they get soggy in a storage container? No, no. If you eat it within one or two days, which I plan on doing, otherwise they, they would get soggy after a while. But yeah, one or two days, they should be just fine, especially in the lock and locks. The other thing you can do that I haven't done, but I might go back and do, is you can put wax paper between the layers. That always helps too. Okay. Jeff said, if it has the word veggie in it, there's a 100% chance I have not tried it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I love it. So we have two more things to do. We need to um, frost our cake, which I think we'll do next because um, it needs to set just a little bit. And then we will try the cranberry brie bites. And then while we're waiting for the... Um, the cake to uh, set up, we can do the mail. Get like you had a choice. I mean. Jeffrey Pop's here. Hi, Jeffrey Pop. Welcome Hi. in. Hi, Don and everyone. Just got here. That looks delicious. This is the Did you cook the vegetables before you cook them? No, no, they are all raw. The only thing we cooked for that is the um, base, which was a crescent roll crust. Other than that, nope, no cooking at all. Yeah, so it's a nice, easy one to do. Oh, here's the eggnog bread. Here we go. Okay, guys, so here's what we're going to need for the eggnog bread glaze. We're going to need a cup of powdered sugar. Get that there. Oh, Brad. Hi. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> um, we've got, they say rum. Again, I'm not using rum. I'm using vanilla. Um, and a little bit of eggnog and a little bit of nutmeg or cinnamon. So I'm gonna get my little bowl here. I'm gonna get my one cup of confectioner sugar. And it doesn't get any easier than this. I mean, three ingredients, four ingredients, four ingredients, I'm sorry. Nathaniel Bell said hello. Hi, Nathaniel, welcome in. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so that was one cup of powdered sugar. I'm done with that now. Okay, there we go. Now, vanilla. Where did I put it? Oh, wait right there. Okay, vanilla. And we need a little bit more of the nut, um, eggnog. Okay. Oh. I'll come back over here for a plate for those later. All right. So we need some... Vanilla. We need some eggnog and a little bit of nutmeg. This is going to glaze the eggnog bread. I thought it mm -hmm. looked naked. Hmm? I thought it looked naked over there. Yeah, no, it wasn't done. Oops. And then we need a quarter teaspoon. That's a half. I'm just going to use half of the half as a quarter. So we'll use half of that. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, so we're going to stir this together. And if it needs more um, eggnog, we'll add more eggnog, but let's see what we got. Okay. 
I'm going to get it to the right consistency. And always, if your glaze is too uh, thick, you can always add more eggnog. If it is too thin, you can add a little bit more powdered sugar to get it where you want it. We're just going to mix really well. My, is my eggnog in the way? Here, I'll move that. I might need a drop more of eggnog because it's really, really thick. <laughs> Look how thick it is, guys. It's really thick. I'm going to put a little bit more eggnog in here. Just gonna keep working with it till you get it right. I am making the glaze for our eggnog bread. Yep. So it's almost like a between a, a glaze and a frosting. And this looks looks guys, see that's much better. It was way too thick. And it depends, you know, the humidity where you are and, and your weather and all that kind of thing. So just play with it. And that's the consistency you want is what I just showed you. And I'll show you again when I put it on the bread. So here's our eggnog bread. And again, here's our, so this is what we're looking at. Casey says, Southern comfort makes the best eggnog. Agreed. You just want to spread it evenly over your cake, top of your cake, or bread as they're calling it. And any excess will drip, that's why I have it on a rock. Jennifer wants to know if the alcohol is cooked out of the Southern Comfort eggnog. Yeah, there's no alcohol in the Southern Comfort eggnog. I don't drink, so that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's non-alcoholic and it's delicious. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could add whatever you want to it. Like my brother was in here earlier and he said he likes it with bourbon or rum. Is that what he said, I think, Richard? My brother Stephen. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? Yay. Here, let's see what it tastes like. Mmm. Oh, that's yummy. Let's see if Richard approves. <laughs> so, if you want to take a picture of it like this, Richard, and then we can, um, and you can get this in there if you want to. That way they know what kind I use. And then I'm going to put some of these on a, I'm going to need a little spatula to loosen them up a little bit. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so guys, here's our cranberry brie bites. We're going to need another picture, Richard. I will switch out.
and then we can try them. You ready to try one? Mm -hmm. I want one with cranberry. <laughs> they look really good. Here, come over here where they can see you. I lost the cranberry. <laughs> you missed it, guys. <laughs> of course, when I make a mistake, the camera's always on me. But when Richard drops something, <laughs> he dropped a cranberry. <laughs> Don't step on it by the dishwasher. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go in now. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I love these. I want one more. Mmm. That's so good. And it's worth the effort, I think, making the homemade cranberry sauce so good. Really? It doesn't make it doesn't take that long to make it. Mm. Okay. So guys, we are um done cooking. Um, we just need to wait for the eggnog bread to set a little bit so we can try it. So I'm going to have um, Richard set us up over here so we can do our mayo. And after the mayo, we'll, we'll cut into the eggnog bread and try it. So I'm just going to take a little break and um, have a drink and get some things moved around and put away. And I, I will meet you over by the mayo. This stuff away. Oh, you won't be disappointed who that, Dave. They are amazing, and they are so easy. They're really, really easy. Okay. What? That's right. They saw nothing. Okay. Okay, I put most of that away. Are we ready for um, mail? Yeah. Okay, so I think, am I okay doing it in this apron? Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're going to come over here. And hopefully I look okay. But who knows? <laughs> okay, I think we got to tilt up a little bit. There we go. I know I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hello everybody, and thank you again for being here and joining me, and um, yeah, this is great. So we're going to go through uh, our mail that we got. We got a bunch, so uh, bear with me, but that's good because the eggnog bread needs to set up. So we'll do the mail, eggnog bread, and then we will close out, but thank you so much uh, for sticking with us and, and having fun with us. We had such a blast. Um, but I'm going to start with, uh, I'm not going to read it because it's a very long letter, but um, my pen pal Joey from It's Joey's World sent me a, a really cute letter. He sends me letters all the time and, and I write back and um, I have to write him back. I haven't written him back yet. <laughs> he has these really cool Star Wars stickers on it and um, he's amazing. And Joey, uh, we love you so much and we appreciate you. So he's number one in our book. Oh, hi, Angie. Welcome in. Okay, so I'm going to go through the rest of the headbands that I, I bought from Miss um, Shannon at Thingamaboes, who is an amazing creative woman, and she does amazing things. First of all, let's see. Okay, so she got, I got this um, really cute 50th anniversary 
I'm going to take it out because I'm going to put it on my stand that I have all my headbands and ears on. So I'll open it and show you guys. So, so pretty. It's got the iridescent colors, the purple, and it's got the 50, 50th fabric. I don't know where she finds this stuff, but it's awesome. And the bows are adjustable, and they ha they're so comfortable. Honestly, I love them. The other one I got, of course, was on my head. That was the first one. And then the last bill uh, headband I got for the season is this adorable one. Isn't it cute? It's got little like uh, Christmas trees on the bow itself. And then it's like candy cane stripes on the side. So cute. I love it. And thank you, Shannon. But see, Shannon and I are friends. And she... <sighs> She sends me surprises every so often, and I placed this order with her, and I was not expecting what I got in the box with my headbands, and she sent one of these for Sam and me, and it's a Disneyland authentic, real, edible gingerbread man, and it survived the trip, and I'm so excited to try this. They are like a hot commodity. They sell out everywhere at Disneyland. And I'm so looking forward to trying these. She sent one for me and one for Sam. And Shannon, we love you so much and we appreciate you. You're always so thoughtful. And uh, you and Garrett and Pepper, Pepper's her little dog. Uh, we love you guys very much. And she sent me this wonderful little card with figment. But wait, it's not just figment. This is what I mean. Shannon is so creative. Inside, these are ornaments, little ornament tags of Figment and Spaceship Earth. How cool is that? I love it. She so, puts so much thought into what she does and um, even picking out her Christmas cards. It's just perfect. And then she knows how much Sam loves her Disneyland map, so she couldn't get to Disneyland, uh, out to California to visit my mom for uh, the holidays and get to Disneyland again like she wanted to. So uh, Shannon knew that, and she sent us a holiday... Disneyland map, which was such a nice surprise with our headbands, and and um, she always goes the extra mile, so be sure to check her out on Etsy, guys. If you like headbands like what I have, um, thingamabos, she does a great job. She's a sweet, sweet person, um, and she, she I think she custom, will custom make some, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, if you just message her in, on Etsy, but she makes really, really cute stuff, so be sure to check her out. Hi, Jack, Sandy Claus, Logan, Matt. <laughs> Welcome in. And we got a $9.99 super set from Tasha Rock. Oh, Tasha. Such a great show to end 2021. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your kitchen crew. Oh, thank you so much, Tasha and Sean. You guys are, are such good friends, and we love you guys so much. And I, I really hope we get to see you uh, soon. I don't know when your next trip is, but, um, yeah, message me when you guys get here, and, and uh, we must see you. Richard's sneaking all the food. <laughs> I love it. So that was our gift. So now we're going to go to our cards. I mean, there are a lot of them, and they're really, really awesome. So the first one we got is from um, Kenzie Days and Tracy Glenn and um, Billy, um, who is uh, Kenzie's mom and Tracy's wife, and then Matt, who is also um, Kenzie's uh, boyfriend, and they sent me this really, really adorable uh, card, and it says, we hope you all have a very Merry Christmas season. Can't wait to see you in 2022. Am I not doing it right? Oh, well, I can't zoom on myself, so I know, right? So there's that. Very, very sweet. I love the pictures, so I get to see all my friends. So that, that makes me happy, and what I do with all my cards First of all, I save them all. So if you send me a card, it goes, I have a big storage tote in my office, and I keep them all in there. And I, I go through them periodically and, and read them because they make me smile. And I love you guys so much. And when you take the time to do that, I, I'm not just going to, you know, throw it away and look at it and get rid of it. No, I don't do that. Um, I keep them all. And um, with, my, with my Christmas cards, I am um, one of my – doors to one of my um, closets in the um, hallway, I make a Christmas tree out of all the cards. So I, I make a Christmas card tree. <laughs> 
So Richard, Richard looked at me funny the first year I did that, but I think he got it after I made it in the shape of the trees. <laughs> you look like you have to tell me something. Nathaniel said, Donna, I wanted to say thanks again Aww. on behalf of everyone for letting Corey have the magical night of hope at your house. It was the first that you've had. Well, thank you so much, Nathaniel. It was honestly uh, my pleasure. And, you know, Corey called me and he had just, we had donated some lighting uh, to Yeehaw Bob to use for his um, at home shows because we noticed he needed some up lighting. And, and we said, well, we can, we can chip in and, and do that for him. We wanted to surprise him. And so he did. And then he had talked to Bob when he delivered the lights to him. And, and he called me and he said, well, we, Bob and I talked and we want to do something for Give Kids or we want to put on a holiday concert. We just need a venue. And I said, well, use my house. He's like, do you know what you are asking me? And I'm like, yeah, use my house. I mean, I use it for my streams all the time. Just go ahead. And um, we, it just kind of took on a life of its own after that. <laughs> but it was so much fun. And anytime I get to spend with Corey and Steve uh, is, is a joyful time. And Nick, too. Uh, we all, four of us, and Richie and Sam worked really hard behind the scenes putting everything together for a long time. And um, it was just nice getting to spend extra time with my friends, too. So, yes. Alan Roberts has said good night. Oh, good night, Alan. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I know I'll see you in the streams in the meantime. So take good care and happy, happy holidays. Oh, okay. Yes, my, my box is not open on Saturdays, unfortunately. So I will definitely be checking that um, tomorrow, Keith and Mandy. And anyone who sends cards or anything like that, if, if it's a stack or something, I, I will definitely either post on Instagram or in the Facebook group, or if I get enough of them, I will put a blog, to, a short blog together just to thank everybody because, you know, you guys take the time to think of me. That honestly fills my heart more than you'll ever know um, that you, you want to do that for me. It just, you guys always just melt my heart and I want to acknowledge you and, and make sure you know that I got it. So yeah, absolutely. I will let you know. And thank you. Thank you so much. And I sent you a card, but I don't think it's there yet. So just keep an eye on that, out for that, Keith and Mandy. All right. Yes. I know. It was a no brain. I mean, like, I, I knew Yeehaw Bob, I mean, Bob, you know, <laughs> before, before all of this. Um, so he's always been a friend. He volunteers at Give Kids the World. I volunteer at Give Kids the World. Um, so it was, it was just, um, it was so cool having him actually perform and you guys didn't see this, but I actually got to sing with him before the show started. And, uh, it was the best moment when he pointed at me, he's like, you, you can sing. And I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's like, yeah, let's sing. And so we sang and it was great. And it was so much fun. Um, and just, like I said, being with all my friends and for such a wonderful cause, it, it just is a no brainer. And I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. If Corey uh, needed a venue, I would say here, do it at my house again. It, it was a blast. And, you know, Nate was here and, um, it was his first time at my house because he's so busy and, and he's like, this is fun. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, you need to come have cookies. He's like, yeah, I need cookies. So it was great. But it was it was wonderful having everyone here and, and um, Big Fat Panda John, uh, such a sweet man. Uh, it was just an honor having the, having them all here, and um, I would have them all back in a heartbeat. But okay, so moving along, we got this really great uh, Christmas card from our good friends the McDevitts, uh, Pete, Nan, Kayla, Amber, and Preston, um, and I think it's it's really cute, and then. It, Got his logo on the back, and I love it. And Pete, Preston, and Nanette, and Amber, and Kayla, you guys are awesome. I love spending time with you when you were here a little bit ago uh, in November, and um, I just wish it was more time. Uh, my foot was not cooperating at all, uh, so I didn't get to the parks um, like I had hoped to. But um, definitely on your next trip, 
we are we are going to make it happen. I'm going to get this foot fixed tomorrow. I hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Now this one's so cute. Um, it is a Christmas tree made of beignets, which I think is adorable. And this is from Andrew C. And she's from obviously Louisiana, like one of my very best friends, uh, Emily, LSU mom. So go Tigers. And yeah. It's so adorable. I, I, I'm not going to read all the like personal notes inside and stuff because they, they're, you know, personal. But she's just very sweet. And thank you so much, Andrea. I love it. Then we got this one is Ho, Ho, Ho. And another very cute note. It says, sending you special wishes for a very Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays from Kim T. So I think that's just adorable. I love Santa. He's so cute. I think Richard kind of looks like Santa. <laughs> Richie. Okay, so this one says Merry Texmas. And this is from my good friend Wanda and Daniel. And uh, they're cruising for food on YouTube. And they have a Facebook group as well. And they are really cool and I love them. So thank you, Wanda and Daniel. Merry Christmas. Okay, so now we have one here. Um, it says Merry Christmas with a beautiful wreath on it. And it says with all good wishes for Christmas and the new year from Brian and Christine Hickman, who were in the chat earlier. I don't know if you're still here because I know you're on vacation. So <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your vacation and not watching me right now. So um, I got your card and it's absolutely beautiful and it's going on my Christmas card tree. So thank you so much. All of these are going on my Christmas card tree. And this one's really pretty with stars, several stars. And it says, more wonder, more twinkle, more merry, more joy. Wishing you a holiday that is everything you want it to be and more. Thank you for all you do, Julie C. Chu. There we go. Very pretty. I love that. Then we have one with a really glittery, and I love glitter. I know my friend Doug over at PTV, it freaks him out because he's one I have to deal with the mess. I love glitter. Uh, this says Merry and Bright, and it has a really cute snowman. And it says, with warm thoughts of you at Christmas and a wish for everything that brings you happiness. And it says, full of love, peace, faith, and friendship, your fellow foodie, Patty Solomon. Very nice. And then this one's really cute because it's handmade. It is a uh, Christmas gift tag. And it's really cute. Here's the inside. And it's from Bill and Lori Ebach, our good friends. And then she even stamped it on the back. How cute is that? And it says, Christmas blessings to you and yours and a very happy new year. Love, Bill and Lori. So thank you so much. We have this really cute holly um, with gold. Happy holidays. It says, sending warm holiday wishes. Merry Christmas and happy new year. And this is, of course, from my wonderful friends at Joey's World, Lisa, Keith, and Joey. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I know. He would be freaking out with his, yeah, he needs glitter glows so he can keep the glitter away. <laughs> um, this is so cute. It says the most magical time of the year, and it's got um, Minnie and Daisy, and they're giving a snowman a kiss. And it says, uh, Seasons Greetings, and it's from um, Disney World Freak, uh, Carlos and his family. Isn't it cute? Okay, and then this one I love. I love, 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 love this one. Um, this is so cute. It's a uh, Baby Yoda, and it has a very, very uh, sweet note inside. And it says, Sending a Bounty of Joy Your Way. How, how cute is that? And this is from the Jufeli crew. And Ron, Meredith, Ronnie, and Madison, thank you so much. I love you guys. Merry Christmas. All right, so the next one's this really cute um, cutout house. And if you can see, it looks like that. And then you open it, and it goes to all the different houses. There we go. It's like a little village. <laughs> I love it. It says, Hope Christmas brings more warmth, more wonder, and many moments of joy to your world. Love, Michelle. And uh, this is from um, Michelle Williams. Thank you so much. Here's another really cute uh, handmade card. 
And it says, uh, Merry Christmas has Mickey and Minnie with Santa hats. And um, it's from um, Mike and Yvonne Burgess, the Bergs Run Disney in the chat. So thank you, the Bergs Run Disney. I think it's absolutely adorable. And again, you know, there's like little pom-pom details on the side. And then on the back, look, she even stamped it. Isn't that adorable? I think it's so cute. And then we have another handmade card. Oh my goodness. And this has stickers in it. Oh my goodness. So this is the outside and I love it because it's like, it's made for me. It says, have yourself a merry little Christmas and it's got Minnie and Chip and Dale. And um, Dale has a chef's hat and some um, Disney shaped cookies. And this is from JC Lalesh and family. And um, it says, uh, Richard, Donna, Donna, Richard, and Sam, and a, uh, and a happy new year filled with sugar and spice and everything nice. I love Mark and Jan, J.C. Lalesh, and she she was so sweet. It, I opened it up, and there's this little pouch, and inside is a Disney gift card. So thank you. Thank you so much. You did not need to do that, and I, I really appreciate it. And on top of that, there's these awesome mini stickers, which I adore. So thank you so much. You, you honestly do not need to do that. And um, I, the trouble you went to to do this hand work on this is just amazing. I love it. I love it all so much. And, uh, you know, you can never go wrong with a Disney gift card, especially when you live with Sam. So Richard can tell you. <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate you very much. And Merry Christmas to you and your family. Um, we got this really, really cute card. It has um, like red foiling on it with the Fab Six. And it says, wishing you a Christmas that's wonderful in every merry way. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And, oh, there's another one from, from the Hickmans. How awesome is that? The Nerd Herders. Hello. Hey, Charlie and Stacy, welcome in. Merry Christmas. So we have this really pretty village scene with more glitter, Cynthia. <laughs> it says, happy memories, warm thoughts, and thankful prayers. And, oh, this is so ironic. It's from the Disney Nerd Herders. <laughs> Look, Charlie and Stacy, it's your card. I got it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And um, inside, it says, thinking of you at Christmas, we are sending... Uh, you are love and best holiday wishes and, and from uh, Disney Nerd Herders. We love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Okay, so now we have one that says, um, ho, ho, ho. And it says, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And this is from um, a really amazing person. Um, I don't know if you've seen him in the chat, Martin Lowe. Um, I've known him for years through the chat and uh, met him through um, Resort TV One's chat. And he's just such a lovely person, a very kind hearted uh, man and his family. Um, and they sent this all the way from across the pond, just like UK Disney Keith and Mandy. It always amazes me when people do that and take the time and expense and effort to do that uh, for me. I just, I just love seeing you in the chats and it just makes my day to know you're here. So thank you. And he just said, um, to all at dinners with Donna, always great to watch your live streams. Have a great Christmas and New Year from Martin Lowe and family from across the pond. So there we go. Thank you, Martin. And very Merry Christmas to your, you and your family. And a happy, happy and healthy New Year to you. And this is so pretty. I love this because my good friend... And you know her in the chat, Joyce Anuto, Joy S, hand-painted this card. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. And it's of our snowman. And it says, may happy moments and cherished memories surround you with joy this season. And it's from the Sanitas. And I think it's absolutely adorable. Love it. Oh, and I hope Sean and Tasha are still here because I got your card. <laughs> I love you guys so, so much. And it says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome. John 1, 5. Merry Christmas. And I love that verse and I love you guys. And your note is just beautiful. And 
honestly, um, you know, you guys write to me all the time and you say the kindest things and I'm just overwhelmed with, um, thankfulness for all of you, um, for thinking of me, but Sean and Tasha, they're, they're special and, uh, love you guys. Okay. So I think this, we got the last one and we saved the biggest for the last. And I hope he is still in the chat too, because this is from Glenn Marchant, our very good friend, Glenn Marchant. And, um, this didn't really fit in my box, but I, I got a, little, a note saying that there was something too big to fit in my box, and this was it. <laughs> and it says Mary and Bright, and it has Mickey on it. I think it's the biggest card I've ever gotten. <laughs> and um, he sent a lovely note. And, and Glenn, I just want you to know um, that your note, it was just overwhelming and so thoughtful and so kind. And it filled my heart so much that we do that for you and that we mean that much to you. And I know what you've been through. Um, I've been through similar things and um, my heart is with you. So I, I, I'm just glad that we can make you smile and bring the cooking to you and, and make you feel some happiness. That makes me very, very happy. And it says one wishes for your jolliest holiday yet. And here it is. How can you go wrong with that? Have a holly jolly. <laughs> so that was lovely. And he sent it, like I said, a beautiful no. And, um, but that wraps up my cards and everything for now. And I'm just so filled with gratitude for all of you. Um, you have no idea how much you mean to me. You really brighten my day. And, um, you know, like I said, I save all of these and go back and read them and your sweet notes and sentiments. And um, I just find it so encouraging if I'm having a bad day or uh, feeling down. I look at those and I'm like, how can you feel depressed or down when you have so many beautiful people in your life uh, cheering you on and encouraging you? So I'm actually very, very blessed um, by all of you. And um, you all mean the world to me, and I cannot thank you enough. Like I said, that none of this is, is necessary, and it's totally appreciated more than you'll ever, ever know. Um, every Anytime I get a note or a card from any of you, it just it, it makes my face light up. You can ask Richard or Sam. I'll be like, guess who sent a note or a card? I get so excited um, just because that you're thinking of me. And I just want you all to know that I think of you guys too. And I love you all so, so much. And you all are special to me. Each and every single one of you um, just mean the absolute world to me. So hearts to you guys, hearts. <laughs> okay. So with that said, we are almost ready to wrap up um, our last show of 2021, guys. We're going to try our eggnog bread and then we're going to close out. So let's do this, shall we? Richard's like, bring on the eggnog. Okay, I'm going to go this way. Oh, yeah, it's set up perfectly. See, that took just the right amount of time. I'm stealing this. Get a picture of it with that, like that. Maybe take one more just before I caught it. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm out of forks. Do you want a real one or a plastic? I'll be nice and let you have. Okay, guys, so are we on the right camera? Okay. Here we go, guys. I'm going to cut a piece for Richard and a piece for me. Oh, it's the happy version. Okay, 
Can you go, sir? Are you really being that fickle? Yeah. Well, now you gotta take a picture of it cut. You know, like, or you did like that on a plate where it's nice. Oh, here's my fork. <laughs> Richard, Richard. <laughs> okay, get over here and try your cake. Okay, we're going in. We're that cake. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. The end is good. <laughs> it's got that little crispy. Mm. I'm happy. Really good. Mmm. That was amazing. Okay, guys, so we did it. We're ending 2021 dinners with Donna on a very high note. We made so many yummy things over the course of this year, and I couldn't do it without all of you and your generosity and you being here with me week after week and sticking in there through the marathons and everything. And I mean, you're incredible. Just so you know, um, my donation link is still open for Give Kids the World. I'm keeping it open through Christmas. So if anyone has yet to do so and is so inclined, please feel free to go over there and donate. My goal is to get it up to um, 13000 by Christmas, fingers crossed. We're at 12504 the last time I checked, which was when the stream started. Um, I don't have my phone, so I can't check anymore. But um, hopefully it gets up there. But if not, we've done a good thing, and we made two wishes come true, and that's an awesome thing. So thanks to all of you. Thank you for watching and for just being here and for all your support because without you guys, there wouldn't be a show. So thank you so much. And we will see you in 2022. And on behalf of Richard, Samantha, and myself, my kitchen crew, I want to wish all of you a most merry, wonderful Christmas season, a happy and healthy new year. Be kind to each other, be compassionate, and just live life and, and enjoy. And that's it. Merry Christmas, Merry guys. Christmas. Bye. Bye. Don't cry. I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm stuck in my apron. <laughs>